last qualifying game, well then these November matches wouldn't have mattered. They wouldn't have been going through in the group. That victory over Croatia has opened up all the doors of possibilities and an unchanged team with Danny Ward in goal. Hasn't played any games for Leicester City, his club this season, but Rob Page sticking by him for Wales. Three central offenders, Joe Roden, Chris Meppham, Ben Davis. The wing-backs, Connor Roberts of Burnley on the right, Nico Williams of Nottingham Forest. Then there's Jordan James, Ethan Ampadu, with Brooks and Harry Wilson in support of Kiefer Moore up front. Moore, who's got 12 international goals to his name in the past. Wales wearing the change strip. Armenia are all in red, Wales all in white. And Ogden Cencerovic, who made his international debut in the game against Wales in Cardiff that Armenia won. He's in goal tonight behind a back four of Grigori Arituriad at right back. Yarazad Haryan alongside Andre Kalizir in the centre. Nair Tiknijan is at left back, plays his club football in Russia with Lokomotiv Moscow. Three in the midfield, Ugo Choko Ayu with Van Bichichan and Eduard Spirzian. And then there's a front three, Artak Dashian, Lucas Zelarian and Grant Leon Ranos. We are underway, Wales playing from left to right as we look down. Dry, not too much wind in Yerevan as the ball is pumped forward by Harian for the first time. Down the right-hand side for Armenia. Armenia, who had a very good start to this calendar year, unbeaten in the group from March through to September. But their form has gone off the rails a little bit. Three defeats are in a row in their last three matches. Their coach, Alexander Petrikov, who's a familiar face, is Ukrainian. He was the Ukrainian coach last year when Ukraine, Ukraine tried to qualify for the, the World Cup in Qatar, beat Scotland in the uh, semi-final of the playoff, and then, of course, lost to Wales um, in the playoff that saw the Welsh go to Qatar, and he lost his job with uh, Ukraine after that, Petrikov, but now he's in charge of Armenia. Throw in for Wales, right-hand side. Connor Roberts prepares to take it. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting start to the game. Connor, obviously, you know, Wales know how big the game is for them, but, you know, they've got to feel themselves into the game. You know, Armenia are going to be buoyed by that result in Cardiff. You know, they, they know they can score against Wales and, and what it takes to, to beat this Welsh team. So, yeah, Robert Page will probably have said to the boys, you know, feel your way into the game, take your time, get on the ball and, and, and try and settle the nerves. And, um, and that's certainly how it started. Gregory Arut Union is a teenager, turned 19 last month. He's made something of a, a minor error trying to clear the ball away there, blocked down by David Brooks. Ball went out of play for a throw into Armenia. They've taken it and they work through the midfield now. Dashian turns and rolls it back to the goalkeeper, uh, the captain. Harry Yan, who's making his 79th cap. The Astana defender plays his club football in Kazakhstan. Good bouncing atmosphere from an Armenia crowd that have uh, enjoyed many of their team's results in this qualifying campaign. They've not been able to reach the heights of Wales, but they've put in a good stint. Through the summer, it looked like Armenia had a decent chance of qualifying automatically. Ball played forward towards the edge of the Welsh penalty area. And good defending back there, and Bichachian, who had been the furthest forward, not able to control it. The ball goes out of play on the far side and a throw in to the host. Nil-nil in Yerevan and five live. Yeah, straight away you can see Armenia, you know, they're, they're not in trouble. The Wales are, are, are staying off them a little bit, letting them keep the ball, letting them have their passes, but as soon as they get that chance to play it forward, they're getting it forward as quick as they can, and then they're trying to trying to get on the little knockdowns, trying to work around, you know, the edge of Wales' box a, a, and get the ball forward. Armenia had a very positive campaign last season. They were promoted from League C up to League B in the Nations League. Still waiting for the opportunity to go and travel to a major tournament. Harian has it, no big press from Wales. Rolls to his right-hand side to Kalizir. To the halfway line where there's a touch there for Dashian. Armenia working their way into Welsh territory. Good challenge comes in by Ben Davis. Just a stunt progress, but Armenia hold on to possession. The Nigerian-born Iwu. Has it in the midfield, plays his club Russia, uh, football in Russia now with Ruben Kazan. Harian has it inside the centre circle. Three minutes played, Armenia nil, Wales nil. And now Zelarian, born in Argentina, he's got a trick or two. And as uh, if I was Argentinian and I was in the Armenian team, I'd want to wear number 10 as well. And he does, and he's challenged by Chris Meppham, and the ball you've, goes out of play. You've got to say, they look very comfortable, very comfortable on the ball. You know, everyone's you know willing to take the ball. You know, they're, they're, they're 
moving for their teammates and, and, and like I said they, they look all of them look very comfortable at the minute on the ball. Zalarian's cross field pass is a good one it brings Dash at it to play on the right hand side he's got a trick too tries to weave his way around Nico Williams and then blazes a shot that's a way off target Artek Dashian, who scored Armenia's goal in the draw against Turkey in September, but he wasn't threatening Danny Ward's goal there. It did deflect away, and it'll be a corner. Corner to Armenia on the right-hand side. Vicha Chan has got across to take. He plays his club football in Poland. It's his 30th cap this evening for Armenia. Wales have brought everyone back into the penalty area to defend it. Two Armenians standing over the ball by the corner flag. Yeah, Wales really got to concentrate, Connor. You know, you, you, you think when Wales settle down, they're going to have possession. But when Armenia have got set plays, corners, this is where, you know, as a defender, you really need to, to concentrate because, you know, the delivery, no doubt, is going to be excellent. Bouncing up on his toes. Danny Ward is a piece or two off his goal line, wearing all black. Waiting for this corner kick delivery taken in front of the Welsh supporters who are housed at that end. It was an in-swinger from Pichachichan, it's not been fully cleared away. Zelarian tries to find the angle for a shot, and he drills it, and it's in! Right-footed shot to the bottom corner! Problem for Wales in Yerevan! It's Armenia 1, Wales 0, and it's Lucas Zelarian who plays his club football in Saudi Arabia. Scored! in the win over Wales in Cardiff and he scored against them what a start for Armenia what a poor start for Wales on this big big day Armenia won Wales nil it's a great start from Armenia we're just saying how comfortable they all look in possession I just mentioned it you know concentrating from set plays Wales haven't quite dealt with the first ball in from the corner you know it's gone up in the air Danny Ward's a bit undecisive doesn't know whether to come out it's a poor header down and you've got to say he's taken the goal tremendously well good first touch another touch and he's rifled it right into the corner. Great goal from Armenia. There's a, a patience about Zelari in here. He takes a touch. He goes past another defender, takes a little touch, waited until the opportunity properly presented itself. And you have a bit of sympathy for Danny Ward when you look at the replay because there's a line of defenders directly in front of him, obscuring his view. And the Leicester City keeper can't get down in time to save. Big start for Armenia. They're letting off the pyrotechnics. There's loads of flames evidence in amongst the spectators the smell of sulfur in the air with the with the smoke now bellowing from the armenian fans and wales if they're going to get the win here and a win is really required rob page's team are going to have to do it the hard way and I, come from behind i was ex exactly what i was going to say we're really going to see you know what this wales team have got now because this is this is going to be a, a, a tough afternoon because like i said they're so comfortable that the, the crowd's bouncing you know there's a great atmosphere in the stadium so we're really going to see what this this wales team have got they come on the attack down the right hand side with Kiefer moore Kiefer moore who's earning his 38th cap this evening the bournemouth striker and the ball goes out of play for a throw into Wales, which Conor Roberts will take. It's level with the edge of the penalty area that Wales attack, playing from left to right as we look down. Roberts takes a big long run in, arches his back, sends a good high throw towards the edge of the six-yard box. It comes down for Brooks, who shot his just over the top. Wales appealing and took a touch of the way through. That was a chance. Shot for David Brooks inside the penalty area just over the crossbar yeah big chance it's, a, it's not pretty football you've got to say Connor. it's a long throw into the box from from Connor roberts a little knockdown poor header from from armenian defender and you've got to say david brooks should probably do better you know he's probably 12 13 yards out and, and, and unfortunately he's put it over the bar david brooks who scored in wales win over croatia last month his third international goal he's got a couple for bournemouth this season scored against swansea in the league cup scored against brentford in the Premier League in September. You know, the standards of qualifying international football, that was an opportunity. He had a side of goal, he was in the penalty area. There were defenders closing in on him, but he got the shot away cleanly but couldn't keep it down. Ampadu rolls the ball back to Ben Davis, the left-sided of the three Welsh central defenders. He's got Joe Roden alongside him. Then it's played out to Connor Roberts on the right-hand side. There's a press from Armenia, who've, who've certainly got wind in their sails now. This is just the start that Alexandra Petrikov would have wanted for his team. Yeah, it's a tremendous start, but I don't mind this from Wales. You know, it, it looked a little nervous start. You know, they obviously know how big the game is. So just to see him having a little bit of possession, you know, every player getting a touch and just trying to settle into the game. Joe Roden with a strong challenge. The ball doesn't go out of play. Battling for it is Harry Wilson over there. 
And then the referee says that it, it has gone out, it's going to be a throw into Wales. And the cheers and the whistles you can hear in the background is because the Armenians fans think that there was a foul on their number 17, Grant Leon Ranos there. Ranos who plays in Germany with Borussia Mönchengladbach. And it was Wilson who was tangling with him, right in front of the assistant referee who didn't feel the need to give the free kick. Wales go long, it's pumped up towards Kiefer Moore. That's very good control with his right boot to take the ball down from a height coming over his own shoulder. Harry Ann bundles him off the ball but then loses it and as David Brooks picks it up he's in an offside position. That's unfortunate for Wales. Free kick to Armenia, left back place for them. Armenia, you can tell already that you know, they look so up for this game. The atmosphere, you know, the, the feeling that's in the stadium and, and the players, they, they're pressing Wales really well and when they get the ball, as I mentioned, they, they, they're really comfortable but you know it's early stages it's early stages Wales need to settle down into this game and, and, and try and you know create a little bit more than they, than they have in the opening 10 minutes if you've been listening to Five Live for the last half hour or so you'll have heard that there's a very exciting game in League 2 between Notts County and, and Bradford there's been another goal in it Jamie Walker has scored with a quarter of an hour to go to make it Notts County 4 uh, Bradford 2 will keep you up to date with the uh, the various uh, domestic games that are taking place today, also the racing at, at Cheltenham and the, the Rugby Union Premiership game, Leicester Tigers against Northampton, which uh, gets underway later on, the regular Saturday afternoon Five Live service, but big, big game for Wales. It has not started well if you're just tuning yeah, our way. Armenia won Wales nil, the early strike from Lucas Zalarian. Wales play it out towards the right wing here, there's no one over in that position, and Nair Tiknijan who has started every game since his debut earlier on this year, is able to control it and roll back to Kancerovic, the goalkeeper wearing sky blue. Left-footed clearance from Kancerovic, long, swirling, well up over the halfway line. Joe Roden backpedalling towards the edge of his penalty area, looked a little bit uncomfortable. Ampadu makes a challenge, which the Armenian crowd thought was a foul. Referee was right beside that, he says Ampadu's challenge was fair. And the Volkers had a play for a throw in. Ten minutes played, Armenia won Wales nil. They've really ruffled Wales' feathers here because I mentioned it once or twice now. They're so comfortable on the ball. So, as this Wales team know, they can do both. You know, they can, they can go long as they just have from the goalkeeper and challenge and get on second balls. But also, Wales know they have got a pressing because they're so comfortable on the ball. So, yeah, Rob Page has got his work cut out, getting the messages on to this Wales team to actually press or, 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 or they're going to sit off. James, you'd have played in, in so many of this, this sort of game in the past. You, you go to Eastern Europe, the stadium itself doesn't look too threatening when it's empty. It's a you know, relatively small crowd, but then it fills with the fans and it becomes very vociferous. And there's a lot of national pride being shown by these Armenians who'd love to win this game and upset Wales. Exactly, and, and everything about it, Connor, is, is, is to make you feel uncomfortable. You know, the referee and the, the, the way they, you know, the Armenian players are staying down after fouls and, and the whistles and the boos. You know, it, it, it's tough. You know, it's an easy saying, there's no easy games in international. Football, but Wilson looks for more here on the edge of the penalty area. Kiefer Moore did well to jump and rise, and he won his header. And he was trying to nod it down for David Brooks, but too many defenders in the way. And Armenia are able to kick the ball clear. 12 minutes played, Armenia won. Wales nil. Kiefer Moore, who didn't feature in Bournemouth's most recent game, the win over Newcastle. His last club appearance was when Bournemouth lost to Liverpool. That was November 1st. Hasn't scored this season for club or country, Kiefer Moore, but such a regular supplier of goals over the years for Wales as Wilson comes under the attack down the right-hand side. Can't beat the first defender. Aruti Unian was able to head it away. They haven't fully cleared yet. The goal scorer, Zelari, is back helping out the defence. Good sliding challenge to win possession back for Wales from Chris Meppham. And they have it with Jordan James, the... Birmingham City midfielder who's earning his seventh cap tonight. Wales get it over to Nico Williams of Nottingham Forest on the left-hand side. Turning back on his favourite right boot. He's got support in field from Jordan James. Now to Meppham, midway inside the Armenian half. Armenia have brought everyone back behind the ball to defend with Wales enjoying this spell of possession now. Ben Davis with the captain's armband to Williams on the left-hand side. Fancies a run here up against Dashian. Dashian stretches, misses the ball, catches Nico Williams. That's That'll do for Wales. It's a free kick at a crossing position on the left-hand side. Yeah, good play from Wales, as I said, mentioned, you know, getting a little bit of, of possession, getting touches of the ball. I've got to say, you can see already, Armenia, are gonna, they're going to sit back, they're going to they're gonna defend in a low block, everyone back in their own half doing a defensive work. And again, this, a set play, it's, it's big for Wales. Kiefer Moore, obviously, most of his goals, you know, are scored with his head, he's excellent in the air. Just got to make sure the delivery's right. Harry Wilson, David Brooks, you know, playing for their clubs, you know, Delivery is normally excellent, so these are big opportunities for Wales. Harry Wilson 
looks uh, the most intense standing over this. If he does take it, it'll be left-footed from the left-hand side. It'll be swinging away from the goalkeeper. Kiefer Moore's got two chaperones for company, one in front of him, one behind him. Nico Williams runs over it. It is played in by Wilson. It's going to fall here for David Brooks inside the penalty area. Took an extra touch to control it. Now he's got a defender to deal with. Brooks to the byline. Nice feed down the right-hand side. Armenia thought the ball had got out of play. The officials wave play on, and Zilarian, with a comfortable touch, is able to clear it away for now at least. It will be a throw-in for Wales down the right-hand side. Another opportunity for Brooks, but... On that occasion, he couldn't get it out of his own feet. Under pressure here, Iwu has only cleared it as far as Ampadu. Ampadu, who plays with Leeds United these days, can't do anything with it, and Armenia are able to clear away. James Garland. Yeah, much better from Wales, though, Connor. You know, they're, they're showing the intent. But first real time, we've seen Harry Wilson get on the ball. You know, we know such a such a wonderful player, create, make things happen for Wales, create, scores goals. So, yeah, you can see Rob Page, every opportunity Wales get, they're trying to get it into Harry Wilson's feet and, and get him turned in those area, areas just in front of the defence. Oh, mistake at the back by Harry Ann. Moore tries to play it to Wilson, he's missed him. Arriving Nico Williams, whose shot is deflected away. That's Wales' best chance. And Varazat Harry Ann. The Armenian captain is much relieved there because he gave the ball to Kiefer Moore on the edge of the penalty area. Moore was not selfish, he tried to play in a teammate. And in the end, Wales will be disappointed not to have gotten an attempt on target there, but they do have a corner. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hopeful. It's a hopeful ball, really, at pitch from Wales, from, from Connor Roberts. Keith Moore hasn't, you know, hasn't given up on it. He's, he's, he's put pressure on the, on the defender and he's, and he's made a mistake. Keith Moore will be very disappointed. It's quite a simple pass across the box and he, and he hasn't found anyone. Here comes the corner, headed in front of the goalkeeper by Aruti Unian. Wales have another chance with Brooks, a left-footed attempt that hits the defender, Tiknijan, and rebounds away from the penalty area and eventually is cleared out of play. So Wales looking threatening when they do come forward, but they're a goal down, the goal after just five minutes scored by Lucas Zilarian. We've played 16 minutes now, Armenia won, Wales nil, a week that could see Wales' automatic passage to next summer's Euro 2024 finals in, in Germany. You know, the Welsh fans who enjoy themselves, of course, they did in France in 2016. Euro 2020, the, the delayed tournament, that was a little bit strange. It was the global pandemic was still in evidence, and you know, the, being able to, to travel en masse to, to games was still a bit tricky back then. Then there was the Qatar World Cup, which is obviously a very long journey. But but how Welsh supporters would love the trip to Germany. I mean, that's easy access to travel en masse. Yeah, I think you ask any Welsh fan, you know, going to talking about myself in 2016 in France you know the, what the, and we did so well and, and got to the semi-final but for those Welsh fans that sort of time going away supporting this country and Wales have always had tremendous support and, and done really well to, to go over to Germany and you know, the, the players will know that the players these Welsh players will know you know what it means to everyone in Wales to qualify and like I said we're going to see what they've got because you know they They've done all right the last five, ten minutes. They've got into the game and created chances, so we're really going to see what steel this Wales team's got. Here come Armenia, trying to attack down the right-hand side. Dashian's unable to control a long cross-field ball, and that bounces out for a throw-in to Wales. The most recent David Brooks shot, which was charged down, the VAR did look at it to see if there might have been a handball off uh, one of the defenders, Kalisir. We've seen the replay, his, his arms were well down by his side. I don't even think it hits his arms anyway. It comes off his chest or his stomach. Um, but that was how that particular shot was charged down. Referee Benoit Bastian has come over to speak to Kiefer Moore because he's got a cut on his face. I think it's a bang on the nose, something like that, but you can see a few splatters of blood and, and they obviously just want to make sure that, that he's not continually bleeding, that they can that they can stem that before play can continue here. That's what I was saying, Connor, about games like this, you know, they, they'll do everything to try and slow the game down, the, the you know, the referee, every, every little thing, so it's going to be tough. Wales need to settle down and, and, and like I said, try and get a bit of possession. Solaria tries to dig one into the penalty area, it's going to fall to Ranos here. He's got Mepham to deal with, shadowing his opponent. Dash jumps across from the right-hand side, and Joe Roden rises as well and heads the ball away. Kiefer Moore tries to hook it on towards Jordan James. This is good industry by Harry Wilson to win the ball. He tried to roll it in front of Kiefer Moore, but it wasn't a great pass, and a particular attack breaks down for Wales, who, who are full of industry when they do come forward. 
Uh, in the Women's Super League, it was a 1.30 kick-off at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea women against Liverpool women. We'll go for an update in just a moment. Armenia are on the attack inside the Welsh penalty area. Joe Roden does, does very well. This game's available to watch at BBC One. Sheridan Robbins will give us the latest. Chelsea lead by two goals to one at the break. Lauren James scoring the first. Jess Carter own goal for Liverpool straight from the kickoff. And then Lauren James involved in the second goal with a great cross for Bieber Jones to head home. It's Chelsea 2, Liverpool 1. Thanks very much, uh, Sheridan. In Yerevan, Armenia 1, Wales 0. The early goal conceded with the first shot on target of the match. Wales chasing already away from home in their penultimate game of the group. Kiefer Moore challenged by Harry Ann on the edge of the penalty area. Moore went down. The officials were satisfied it was a clean tackle and Armenia were able to clear away. Yeah, I think it was a good tackle. Uh, Wales are getting quite a bit of joy down Armenia left-hand side. You know, Kiefer Moore doesn't really want to be running the channels all, all afternoon, even though he'll do it and he, and he, and he never gives up. But um, yeah, that's the, the best bit of play at the minute. With, we want to see Harry, Harry Wilson, David Brooks on the ball, you know, a bit more possession and, and, and playing through the lines. But this stage, you know, Wales just trying to do anything to, to get a shot on goal. Here come Armenia again. It would be big trouble for Wales if Armenia were to get a second shot. This time it's a, an effort from Bichichan, which goes wide of the left-hand post of Danny Ward. So Armenia won Wales nil here. Let's go to Cheltenham and join John Hunt. Connor, just underway for the feature race of the weekend, the Paddy Power Gold Cup, uh, where we welcome back two Cheltenham Festival winners, the real Wacker and Stage Star, and those two have gone straight to the front. They lead from the well-fancied Unexpected Party and Fugitive back in fourth place. Early stages, fence number three, Stage Star and the real Wacker take the field along. And we'll be back with uh, John Hunt as that race develops. Wales on the attack, a header for Kiefer Moore, and he can't get it on target. He got up well. He hung in the air like a basketball player, and his immediate reaction is disappointment by Kiefer Moore's standard. That was a very good chance. Still, Wales a goal down. Yeah, by Kiefer Moore's standards, we talked about how, how good he is in the air. You know, it's a lovely little play from Nico Williams down the left-hand side. And he hasn't, you know, whipped the ball, uh, sort of like bent into the box. It's a little dink towards the back stick where Kiefer Moore's standing. And you've got to say, like, you know, player of Kiefer Moore's aerial ability, it, it is another chance. That is Wales' fourth attempt of the game so far. They remain a goal down, 21 minutes play. This is five live from the BBC, the European qualifiers for Euro 2024. Wales away from home, starting the day second in the group behind leaders Turkey, who are already qualified. Croatia are in third, thanks to Wales' victory over the Croatians last month. Croatia do play Latvia later. If Wales were to win this game and Croatia lose that one, Wales would be qualified for the Euros tonight. And even if that was a tall order, a Welsh win here, coupled by a win against Turkey on Tuesday, would achieve the same outcome and, and Wales would be packing the suitcases for Germany in the summer. That Latvia-Croatia game gets underway 5 p.m. UK time later on. This is a 2 p.m. UK time kickoff. Uh, later in Yerevan with the time difference, it's tea time there. Let's go back to Cheltenham, back to John Hunt. Not much change here, approaching halfway, Connor stage start, the real whacker being joined now by Fugitive, unexpected party, still nice and handy, and not long till May is arriving on the outside with Il Rodoto and young Freddie Gingell, only 17, yet to have a Cheltenham winner, let alone in a big race, but going along with every chance. Connor, we're through halfway. We'll be back with John Hunt for the climax from Cheltenham there. Meanwhile, in Yerevan, here come Wales attacking down the left-hand side. There's a long crossfield ball looking for Connor Roberts here, who's up from right wing back, but it sails over his head. Uh, it was a good run made by Roberts, but it'll be a throw-in to Armenia. Nico Williams' crossfield ball just had too much on it. James Collins. Yeah, be very impressive, Armenia, Connor. I think, you know, he's mentioned how big a game it is for Wales, but it's also a, a big game for them. Uh, you know, the stadium's bouncing. And really impressed how they are on the ball defensively. They're all, they're all working together and, and making it hard for Wales to get to string some passes together and, and, and in possession. You know they, they've been they've been really good. So you know it's not, it's not panic stations for Rob Page and Wales. It's at early stages in the game and, and they've got a chance to get back into it. But um, it's not it's not going to be a straightforward one. Many of the games in League One and League Two have been postponed this weekend because of international call-ups. But we'll keep you up to date with the uh, three o'clock uh, kickoffs in, in both of those tiers once they get underway. Uh, we told you that it's half time in the Women's Super League. Chelsea women uh, two one in front against uh, Liverpool. Uh, 
As uh, Wales come on the attack down the right-hand side, Kiefer Moore is ushered right in against the corner flag, and he tried to twist out of that tight spot and wasn't able to do so. Good, solid defending by Harry Yan, who's an experienced defender, been in the Armenian squad for over a decade, 79th cap tonight, he did well there to force Kiefer Moore away from any sort of danger, and that is going to be a goal kick to Armenia, who still lead by a goal to nil against Wales. Yeah, with Kiefer Moore, I mean, the Armenian defenders know they can, because he's playing one up front, you know, David David Brooks and Harry Wilson in behind him in, in, in the 10 positions, but, you know, they can double up on, on Kiefer Moore, and, and he's struggling to get, get hold of the ball at the minute. 24 minutes played, Armenia 1, Wales nil. back to Cheltenham and John Hunt. Where they've just jumped the third last in the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Ireland's authorised art has been pulled up and the well fancied easy as that struggling now up front with two to jump. It's still stage star with not long till May on the outside. Then with those is Fugitive. He's followed by Unexpected Party and Il Ridotto. The real whackers drop tamely away. He's now well beaten. Torn and frayed in sixth place. Roars go up for the runners. Two left to jump. The lead is still with stage star narrowly out in front. Not long till May in second place. Behind those, torn and frayed a faller. Il Rodoto's in third place, but stage star. An exuberant, almost over-exuberant jump at the last. He landed very steeply, lost impetus. Not long till May is trying to gather him in. Behind them in third place, Il Rodoto. But it's the bravest of brave performances from stage star to recover from that scare at the last. He's got a massive weight. Paul Nichols wins the Paddy Power Gold Cup once again written by Harry Cobden stage star has beaten not long till May Il Rodoto in third for young Freddie Gingell and then back in fourth place was Fugitive fantastic performance one of the best in recent years from stage star a winner at the festival now a winner of the Paddy Power Gold Cup as we take you back to Connor to see if Wales can get themselves back in this Euro tie thanks very much to John Hunt 25 minutes played in Yerevan Armenia leading Wales by the early goal to nil Lucas Zelari strike low to the bottom corner after just five minutes Wales have had several attacks since then yet though to really trouble Onyan Cencerovic the Armenian goalkeeper away to the right hand side Jordan James plays the ball back into midfield Joe Roden's got to retreat into his own half to collect it Armenia sitting deep when they don't have possession, trying to make it a congested area for Wales to try and attack into. Harry Wilson comes back, gets a touch, and then it's back with the defenders again on the halfway line. But comfortable doing it as well, Connor. You know, they, they like you say, sat in in numbers, making it hard for Wales. And, and they've been a little bit sloppy on the ball when they have had opportunities to get the ball into to Harry Wilson. But Armenia have been excellent as in, you know, the, the two blocks, as you can see it quite clearly, the two banks are four, and, and, and they're all working hard to, to close the spaces for Wales. Media's recent results over the last 12 months or so demand that they were going to be always respected by Rob Page for this game. Away from home, Wales in need of some inspiration here now. There is a long, long way to go. We have more than two thirds of this game to play. But against a, a very much riled up audience on the Monday Cup, I'm sure that you'll have heard much of the news. There were 32 Wales supporters arrested uh, last night of, of the around 1,200 who've gone on the trip. And, that has been very much in the background of the build-up to this. And Armenian fans in the stadium are making themselves heard. It's just added a little extra element to the competitive nature of the game. Uh, incidents involving Welsh fans in Yerevan last night. This is Dashian controlling on the halfway line. Right-hand side as Armenia come forward, but he gets to the tangle. And the ball goes out of play for a throw-in. Throw-in to Wales on the halfway line. I mentioned it before the game as well, Connor. That they'll they'll be buoyed by that result in Cardiff. That's for sure. You know, going going to Cardiff where Wales have been been excellent in recent years. You know, it's a bit of a fortress there in Cardiff to go there and, and beat this Wales team 4-2. It, it fill them with a lot of confidence. And like I said, the way they're defending, the way they're doubling up on Keith and Moore, and and, and and as well, you know, in possession. So. Um, like I said, you, you can see a couple of the Wales boys already trying to rally each other, trying to get you know a bit of bit of tempo in the game, get you know get something going, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting next 10 minutes where the Wales can actually get their foot on the ball and, and, and try and make one or two things happen. Well, it's all over in the uh, Knox County Bradford game. It's finished Knox County four, Brad, uh, Bradford two. Knox County you were very comfortable at half time. It became more of a, a competition in the, the second period, but. Uh, County move up to third place in the table for now. Kicerovic at the back for Armenia clears away, left-footed, which doesn't get very far. 
Chris Mifflin was able to head it back into the final third that Wales attack. And then it trickles and trickles and eventually goes beyond the dead ball line and out for a cold kick to Armenia Brooks, who tried to get around ball side of Aruti Unian there. But Aruti Unian is only young, but he, he anchored himself into the turf and he did well to hold off David Brooks and ensure that would be a cold kick for his team. James Connors. You can see what it means to him as well. You know, just seeing that it's just, as a defender, it's a simple little bit of play, you know, letting the ball roll out of play, but they're all high fiving the Armenian players. They're all, you know, patting each other on the back. And, and when there's a big tackle, they're, they're, they're all celebrating. So you can see clearly how, how big this game is to, the, to these boys. It's the fourth time these nations have met in senior men's international football, and Armenia have never lost to Wales in the past. Uh, Rob Page was in a, a team that played here at this stadium back in 2011. So, I mean, you would love to, to get home and away double victory over the Welsh in this group. That 4-2 victory at Cardiff was in June. 1-0 to Armenia so far tonight as we reach the half-hour period. This tea time kickoff local time in Yerevan. Ethan Ampadu controls in midfield, immediately surrounded by opponents, and he's got to retreat, and it goes all the way back through Joe Roden and all the way back to Danny Ward, who's earning his 37th cap, the 30-year-old goalkeeper today. Nepham's clearance, long and searching again for Kiefer Moore, who takes it down on his chest. He's dragged Harry Ann out of position in the centre. Harry Ann then bundles into David Brooks. Wales thought they might have got a free kick. Referees his play on. Connor Roberts picks it up, swings in a low class uh, cross. Aruti Harry Ann heads it away. Then there's a collision outside the penalty area, but it's going to be a free kick to Armenia. And Ethan Ampadu was the player who went charging into Bijachan. Free kick to Armenia. For a moment I thought the referee was going to show a card, but I think he's kept that in his pocket. James Conner. Yeah, it's, it's not a great challenge from Ethan Ampadu. You know, he's, he's trying to make something happen, though. You know, he, the, the ball's come out on the edge of, of Armenia's box. Ethan Ampadu's trying to keep the ball alive, and he's, you know, it's not a, you know, modern day football. It is a foul, but he probably has won the ball, but with his clear, you know, the bit, bit of zip on top of the pitch, he's slid and taken, taken the Armenian player out. That's a, it's a good example when you know, when people talk about, oh, but I got the ball. I mean, getting the ball isn't actually, you know, a requirement in terms of whether it's a free kick or not. He, he got a lot more of the opponent there. And then another rough challenge comes in, and this time it's Chris Mepham. And it may have been an arm up into the face of Lucas Zelarian, who's down rolling on the ground and holding his face. Mepham's challenge into him. And the referee has come across. He's given a free kick to Armenia, and now he's got to give a yellow card. It's a booking, a booking for Chris Mepham tonight and that means he misses the game on Tuesday when Wales will take on Turkey in Cardiff on Tuesday Rob Page will be without one of his first choice defenders yeah it's a clumsy challenge again similar to Ampadu's challenge you know he, he's just he, he's trying to make things happen you know the ball's played up to the halfway line he's, he's gone tight and he, he's mistimed it and you know it, it, it is a yellow card but he, he's trying to do the right things he's trying to be on the front foot he's trying to go and win the ball just, just, just a little bit too clumsy Nico Williams is the other uh, Welsh player involved today who's in that predicament of uh, a yellow card would see him miss the final group game on Tuesday. Mepham, the Bournemouth player, uh, like Kiefer Moore, he didn't play in that game against Newcastle last weekend when Bournemouth won to lift themselves up and out of the relegation zone. Mepham's last Premier League appearance was the 6-1 defeat at Manchester City back at the start of the month. This is Aruti Unian across to Harayan, back to the goalkeeper. Kencherovic, whose left-footed clearance will land inside the centre circle. Mepham wins the header, but can't hold on to possession. Nutmeg by Zilarian, who was then fouled. The referee is allowed an advantage. Ramos tries to shoot on the edge of the area. He's tackled by Ampadu. Ampadu has hurt himself in the process of making that challenge. And the Leeds United man is still down. 32 minutes played. Wales of possession on the edge of their own penalty area. He's proving a real handful, Zilarian. He's full of South American flair. The South American born number 10 and that was a dangerous attack and Ampadu did well to slide in and as soon as he won the ball the turf seemed to give away underneath his feet and he fell awkwardly he's done really well getting back you know he's mentioned him once or twice Delari and the goal score he's been excellent he's got the ball like you see he's got that South American bit of flay he's, he's nutmegged Ethan Ampadu I think it was or uh, uh, Joe Roden, sorry, and, and, and making things happen. They're doing both sides of the game excellently. They, they, they're defending well when they need to. They're sitting back. They're, they're closing the space for Wales. But when they got the ball, you know, they're not just happy to keep it. They really want to make things happen when they do get on the ball. Wales hoping to take a big step towards Germany 2024 with the win, but they are still behind from that early Zalarian strike in Yerevan. Armenia won Wales nil. Wales.
Let's see what a disappointing group in Qatar a year ago at the World Cup. The opening draw against USA, followed by back-to-back -back defeats against Iran and, and England. And you can tell there's unfinished business for many of these Welsh players who want to get back on the major stage to show what they can do. Free kick given to Wales for a foul on Ampadu just inside the Welsh half. This is something Wales are going to have to deal with as well, Connor. You can see already whenever there's a you know, an Armenian player foul, they're staying on the floor, you know, they're all coming round, they're pushing and shoving with the Welsh players. This is this is part of sort of international football where you, you've got to deal with going our way to Armenia, needing a result. They're not going to make it easy for you. Like I said, every throw in's taking time, every foul is staying on the floor. So this is another part of the game that these, these Welsh players are going to have to, have to try and deal with tonight. Just over 10 minutes to go until the break. Rob Page does have options on the bench. Brennan Johnson, who got his first goal for Tottenham last weekend in their uh, defeat against Wolves. It feels inevitable we're going to see Johnson at some stage tonight. How soon it'll be remains to be seen. Armenia possession, right fullback position. Artak Dashian clears it away, gets a deflection off Nico Williams. And that is a throw into Armenia, right fullback position for them. Rob Page goes and has to sit down in the technical area. That's a word with Chris Gunter down there, and a few of the other backroom staff. Alexander Petrakov, the Armenian coach, stands with his arms folded across his chest, but he's got to be very pleased with these opening 35 minutes from his team. He'd be absolutely delighted, Connor. Like I said, both both sides of the game, they're doing really well, and they're, and they're not just happy to keep the ball. I mentioned it, they're, they're, they're still trying to score more goals, go and take the game to Wales, but yeah, they, they, they should be absolutely delighted with themselves, the, the way they've, they've handled this th first 35 minutes. Wales, who have won their last three games in a row, they beat Latvia 2-0 away in September, back-to-back -back home wins in October against Gibraltar, and the key one against Croatia, which has opened this door of opportunity, but can Wales take it? 1-0 down for the moment. Here comes Aruti Unian over the halfway line, gives it to Zalarian. Back to Aruti Unian again, they're playing neat, one-touch triangular football here, Armenia, they're full of confidence, Brooks nips in and brings that little rondo to a close, and then Brooks is fouled, and it's a free kick to Wales, 10 yards inside their own half, good work for the Bournemouth number seven there. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a, it's a worry, Connor, you know, you've got David Brooks and Harry Wilson doing more defending than, than attacking, and that's that's why Robert Page has sat down, he's, co he's, he's speaking to his coaches and, and trying to figure out how we can get our flair players, how we can get Harry Wilson on the ball to make things happen, but... As I say that, you've got to give credit to Armenia for the way they, they are closing those spaces and defending really well. And Solarian, who got the goal, by the way, it's his third international goal uh, for his country. All three of them now have come against Wales. He'll want to play Wales every week. He got uh, two in Cardiff earlier on in the group, and he's got the opening early goal here that separates the teams for the moment. Ball goes on a play near the halfway line. Uh, I think the last touch there came off Jordan James. It's going to be a throw into Armenia. Rob Page comes across and holds the ball himself and just tries to get a little breather for his team as he tries to give an instruction onto the pitch. No urgency, of course, for Tickney as he takes his time over the throw-in for Armenia. Armenia don't have the same jeopardy today that Wales do. Out of defence of the back comes Ben Davis, a pass into midfield to Harry Wilson. Wilson has got one goal for Fulham this season, it came in the League Cup. Jordan James picks out a nice pass through the midfield to Brooks and then Brooks sends one to be chased after into the penalty area down the left-hand side by Nico Williams. Williams has done very well, pulls it back for Harry Wilson whose shot is saved away. That's the best save that Kacerovic has made. Left-footed shot by Wilson across the face of goal looking for the far corner. Diving to his left, Kacerovic was able to push it away. Better from Wales, who is still a goal down. Yeah, much better. First bit of quality, nice ball in behind for, for Nico Williams, who's taking his time. It, it looked like there was only one in the box, only, only Kiefer Moore in the box to cross it, so he hasn't crossed it. He's cut it back to Harry Wilson. And you've got to say, it's a tremendous save. It, it's going in in the far corner, but it's the first time we've seen, mentioned him, you know, Harry Wilson. He is the, he is the tallies man for Wales now. He makes things happen, he scores goals, and the first real glimpse we've seen of him. It's a good shot for Wilson, even better save by Kacerovic. Here comes the corner, there's pushing at the back post, and the referee is going to give a free kick to Wales. They're saying that Kiefer Moore committed a foul on the defender as the ball came in. That shot from Wilson, we've seen a very good replay angle of it from behind the goal. That was going in. He went for accuracy rather than power, he sort of tried to spin it into the corner, but the keeper had ground to make up, but he did very well to dive out and push it away. Confidence for Wales, 
but how they would love an equaliser before half time. They would, it'd be huge. And, uh, you know, they just had a corner there, another set play. Keith Moore's going to struggle tonight. You can tell already the referee is, is watching him. They're doubling up on him up from, from corners. There's two two men marking him, and he's, and he's struggling to find any any space. So Wales are going to have to really, you know, improve their quality in the final third. Armenia 1, Wales 0. This is David Brooks on the attack for the Welsh wearing all white. He tried to nudge it into the penalty area there where Ben Davis had made a charging run forward from defence, but defender got in the way and Armenia were able to clear it. This is Ampadu on the halfway line wearing number 15. Gives it out to the left-hand side. Plenty of energy in the Armenian defensive ranks there. Not allowing Wales any sort of time or space on the ball tonight. Stooping header away by Aruti Yunian will pick out the dangerous Zolari, and he really is the playmaker. That's an excellent pass down the left channel to pick out Spitzian, Edward Spitzian, who plays in Russia with Krasnodar, but he's tackled eventually by Chris Meppham. Wales regained possession, but they're back inside their final third, and Wales are having to work very hard here, away from home in Yerevan. There's a mistake, pushed past by Jordan James, too far in front of Conor Roberts, and it's a throw-in for Armenia, attacking position for them down the left-hand side. Armenia won, Wales nil, five minutes to go to half-time. Yeah, a bit of frustration shown from Conor Roberts there. They, they, they're working really hard, Armenia, but when Wales get the ball, it's just that little bit of quality, you know, the first pass out of defence where, you know, they can get on the front foot and, and move at the pinch you can see Rob Page here now he's, he's starting to look a little bit agitated trying to get his messages on so I'm sure if Wales just improve their quality you know they, they could go on and, and, and score and, 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 and get a result but at the minute the quality is, is not there they're sending so many players forward to try and get the goal when Armenia do get the ball they're finding quite a bit of space and a bit of joy themselves this is the fourth time in this group that Armenia have scored first in the game only once have they held on to win it They've had one draw and one defeat. Kiefer Moore is nursing an ankle issue here. He sat down, the physio comes on. Grimace on the face of, of Rob Page as they wait for the diagnosis here on, on Kiefer Moore. He's jumping in the air, he wins a header, and it's as he lands, the defender, Aruti Union, comes down on his landing ankle. That will be a painful one for, for Kiefer Moore. Yeah, so when that, it's, it's no intent at all from the defender. They've both gone for you know a genuine challenge for the ball and came down on on to, to, to Kiefer Moore's ankle. But you know, I mentioned him again. They're, they're doing such a good job. on they obviously you know they know what it's all about. If Wales can't play through the lines into Harry Wilson, they they, they tend to go long to Kiefer Moore. But when they do, I mean, you're there, you know, ready and waiting for it. This is a day that Wales have been looking forward to ever since beating Croatia last month. The opportunity to go to Armenia to win this game and then at the very least know that one more victory on Tuesday against Turkey would qualify them automatically but it is not going to plan so far for Rob Page's team it's still a goal down after that early Lucas Zalarian strike Wales have had one proper attempt on target a left footed shot by Harry Wilson Wilson who scored both of Wales goals in the win over Croatia last month Kiefer Moore who did have to leave the field of play briefly because he got treatment there is back on and he does appear to be running freely he's putting in a lot of work rate Kiefer Moore he's running the channels he's holding the ball up but it's difficult it's, it's very much an away team performance from Wales trying to hit on counter-attacks and Armenia have had more of the possession in the game so far yeah it's, it's tough because you know Wales are trying to keep the ball trying to keep possession but it's all too deep and then when they do go long to Keith Moore he, he, he's, he's, he's isolated you know it's hard for Harry Wilson and, and, and David Brooks to get near him because they are having to work defensively themselves as well Nico Williams has given the ball away Armenia coming the attack down the other end a shot comes in it hits the body of Joe Roden arms safely down by his side Armenia hold on to possession, they have it on the edge of the penalty area. Tik Nishan will roll it back to Aruti Yunian. And this is Iwu in the middle of the midfield, the number six. He's got Spertsian on his right-hand side. Spertsian, who was the Armenian footballer of the year last year, tries to play a low pass towards the edge of the Welsh penalty area. Well intercepted by Chris Mepham, and now maybe a chance for Wales to come on the counter-attack down the other end. Connor Roberts with pink boots on tonight, rolls it in field. Not a great pass, I presume he was trying to find Harry Wilson there who ducked away from it and, and it was never going to get through to Kiefer Moore and just looking at the body language of Kiefer Moore there, a sort of very obvious shrug and he says, what am I supposed to do with a pass like that? Yeah, you can see he's getting frustrated already but again, credit to Ar Armina, you know, Wales are having to play 
you know, deep balls up to Harry Wilson because Armenia working so hard defensively, closing the gaps for, you know, for the for the number 10 position where Harry Wilson can get on the ball. Here comes Moore again, down the right channel, plays in a low cross, hoping someone had gambled on getting on the end of it, but it's Kalizir who's able to clear it away and out for a throw into Wales. And just watching um, Kiefer Moore there, he is hobbling a little bit as he runs and walks and still feeling a little bit of a sting of that landing on his ankle a few minutes ago but this attacking throw in allows the opportunity for some of the defenders to join the attack you don't want Kiefer Moore in the channel crossing the ball you want Kiefer Moore in the box and that just proves you know Wales Wales are struggling to get the numbers forward this is Roberts another long throw flicked on at the front post by Rodan but couldn't find a teammate and big cheer from the home supporters Armenia are able to clear it away and from the halfway line Nico Williams will play it all the way back uh, to Danny Ward. Ward, who hasn't really had a save to make since picking the ball out of his own net with that, that one shot on target that Armenia have had, but it was a very good shot, very well taken. Bided his time, Lucas Zalarian, before picking his spot and planting it into the bottom corner away from the diving goalkeeper. Ethan Ampadu comes forward for Wales into the final minute of normal time in the first half in Yerevan. Armenia won Wales nil. Big game this for Wales. They really need to get the result with Turkey to come on Tuesday to keep qualification in their own hands in this final week of the regular group stage. And, and then longer the game goes on, Connor, you know, this is going to get more frustrating, more frustrating. Armenia doing really well, winning the ball back. It's just going to get more frustrating. The Armenian players are going to take longer. The crowd's going to, you know, over free kicks and, and when they get fouled and the crowd are going to, are going to go up. So, you know, this is going to be a big chat at half-time for Rob Page, knowing how big the game is, but also trying to get these, these Wales boys on the front foot and, 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 and creating chances or more chances than they have. Yeah. Well, deep frustration here for David Brooks, who has had a free kick given against him, and we'll get to see a replay, but on first viewing, it didn't look like there was much of a connection at all, and Kalasir, who went down, Brooks shaking his head, complaining to the referee, and it's that sort of frustrated body language that sums up the mood from the Welsh team at the moment. Into stoppage time, three minutes been added on ahead of the break. Armenia still leading by a goal to nil. Yeah, again, another another case of it. You know, they, it's a it's a foul. It's, it's, it's probably not a foul. He's, he's just David Brooks has gone into the back and he's fallen forward. But they're taking their time already. You know, they they're chatting to each other. They're just they're just going to do everything they can possible to frustrate and and and. and, and not let Wales you know get a rhythm in the game you mentioned about you know you don't want Kiefer Moore being the player running the channels here he is again out near the, the, the sideline trying to get the ball down with the corner flag given that Wales have got Dan James and, and Brennan Johnson on the bench there are options for those those wide players we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment but we'll update the women's Super League Chelsea women against Liverpool women at Stamford Bridge here's Sheridan Robbins it's Chelsea three Liverpool one Lauren James with her second of the afternoon she's got two goals and an assist, drilled it into the bottom corner, it's all Chelsea deserve, it's Chelsea 3, Liverpool 1. And a huge moment for Wales, they're back on level terms, this might have been an own goal, the throw in from Conor Roberts, the celebration's been led by Joe Roden, but we'll wait to confirm who the actual last touch came off, as Kaczanovic is beaten, the Armenian goalkeeper, 90 seconds into stoppage time. What a brilliant time for Wales to score. It is an own goal. It's gone in off Grant Leon Ramos. Scored two goals against Wales in Cardiff. He's put it into his own net here. What a brilliant throw in from Conor Roberts. That was as good as any corner kick delivery. And it's a breakthrough for Wales, back to 1-1. Absolutely huge for Wales, that, Connor, especially the time they've scored. You know, they're in injury time, coming up to half-time. Wales have been nowhere near, you know, their best. But to get that slice of luck, you know, just before half-time, mentioned Rob Page has got a big chat half-time. That chat has now completely changed. These Wales boys have, have got a lift. They, they, they've scored the goal. So, yeah, huge, huge moment for Wales. We'll wait to see who UEFA gives the goal to. On first glimpse, I thought own goal. Joe Roden, of course, would love to claim it. He's never, I mean, not only has he not scored for, for Wales in his career, he's never scored a senior goal for his you know, club level either. That would be a huge moment for him. But regardless, none of the 1,200 supporting Welsh fans who've made the trip to Yerevan care who got the last touch, just that it hit the back of the net, 1-1. And now an opportunity for Wales to regroup, 
get a grip on things over half time and come out and get at Armenia in this second period and keep progression from this group in their own hands. Yeah, it's huge, Connor. We, we said it there. Now, you know, they haven't been their best. It, it's been stop start. You know, they, they, they've struggled with quality. The passes have been gone out of play. It's a great throw in from Nico Williams. When you've got that that asset, you know, he's got such a long throw. He's, he's, he's thrown it pretty much into the into the corner of the, the six yard box. And we've got a slice of luck. You know, when you're not playing well, you need that luck. And Wales have got a huge goal just before half time. The timing feels so significant. We think it will go down as an own goal. Armenia won, Wales won at the break. Wales, who've been given quite the scare here, they were 1 0 down for almost all of that first half. But they will come out for the second period on level terms and it's going to be a very exciting second half now. Wales with Euro 2024 in their sights. At halftime, it's Armenia 1, Wales 1. Yeah, the video printer has, uh, has given that as an own goal. Underwhelming that, really, for Wales, that first 45, James? Yeah, as I mentioned in commentary there, chap, it hasn't been great. And uh, say it again, you've got, you've got to give credit to Armenia. No disrespect, you know... You'd come here thinking Wales would have most of the possession and, 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 and be quite comfortable against this team, but they've been excellent defensively. They're defending the edge of their own box. They frustrated Wales and defended really well. And then attacking, you know, Zalarian's goal is this a little bit of sloppy defending from Wales, you know, I haven't cleared the corner right, but he's taken the goal really well and, and, and they're really comfortable in possession. But I can't emphasise how big that goal is for Wales. When it's a flat game and you're away from home, you know, going in at half time, Rob Page might have been, you know, shouting and bawling at the players, but you know, getting that goal has settled it all down. They can go in and, and as Connor said, you know, regroup and reevaluate and, and come out for, you know, a really important 45 minutes. Well, uh, you made the point towards the end of that first half that as the longer it stays 1 0, the more Armenia will have a game plan just to frustrate Wales. And actually, at the time you made that point was when a ridiculous free kick was given against David Brooks for, for him doing anything, which just summed up the way the game would go the longer Armenia had the lead. So if, if, if anything, I mean, look, we know we need, they need to win to keep qualification in their own hands, but if anything, it might just reduce the amount of frustrating behaviour Armenia will resort to in the, the second half because they'll want, they'll want to get another goal. Yeah, it will. And like say, Armenia are going to come out now, which which possibly give Wales more opportunities going forward. So you could see it straight from the off. And, you know, we talked about how big a game for Wales this is. You know, the, the, the stadium, the fans, it's, it, it's, you know, it's, it's absolutely bouncing here. And every every challenge, every every tackle that goes in, you know, the crowd are up and the players are, are taking their time. So that, that I can't I can't say it again, you know, how big that goal is for Wales to, to, to give them a bit of, you know, a bit more confidence coming into the second half. Do you change the attacking plan in the second half if you're Wales? I mean, as you, you also point out in commentary how well they've dealt with Kiefer Moore and he's getting frustrated as well with, with the deliveries into him. Do you, do you change that philosophy and go more pace? Well, yeah, we've mentioned we've mentioned Kiefer Moore. You know, his, there's no doubt about it. His, his, you know, biggest quality, biggest asset is in the box. You know, I, we mentioned it in commentary. He's, he's been running down the right-hand channel probably a little bit too much. If I'm if I'm the manager or players playing with Kiefer Moore, I don't want him running the channels. You know, I know he'll do it and he'll, and he'll work hard all day, but you want him in the box. So, to me, it's screaming out probably for Brennan Johnson to come on off the bench a little bit more pace. Who can make those runs in the channel and then, you know, leave Kiefer Moore in, in the middle of the 18-yard box where he can cause most damage. Uh, thank you very much, uh, James and Connor. Second half on the way here on Five Live. Let's go to Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 3, Liverpool 1 in the Women's Super League. Sheridan Robbins. Yeah, 63 minutes played and it's a fair reflection of the game we've seen Chelsea very much dominant and it's all about Lauren James two goals one assist Sam Kerr has just gone close for Chelsea a dominant performance and it's uh, Chelsea three Liverpool one uh, coming up from four o'clock here on five live second half commentary of Leicester against Northampton in the Gallagher Premiership you can listen to the full match on Sports Extra though and then from 5.30 on Sports Extra we've got Harlequins against Saracens it's a derby weekend in the Gallagher Premiership uh, Chris Ashton and Chris Jones are ready for Leicester against Northampton. Uh, Chris Jones, first of all, just set this one up for us. Yeah, big game for both sides. Be feel, chappers, especially for the Leicester Tigers. They were champions 
season before last, but they've lost four of their first five in the league under their new boss, Dan McKellar, including at home to Quinn's last time out and at home to Sale nearer the start of the season. So a bit of restlessness around this great uh, bastion of club rugby, really important for McKellar and for Leicester uh, to get a win here. But Northampton in good form as well. They've won the last three, so it's set up brilliantly. Uh, and East Midlands derby always gets the, 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 the blood pumping. So Chris Ashton, what's going wrong at Leicester at the moment? I don't necessarily think it's anything going wrong. I think we're probably underestimating the impact that it has of having a whole coaching setup move on to mm. England and the new guys coming in. That takes time. We've also they've also in between that had all the players away at the World Cup, which is a vast majority of their starting team. So they've only been back in a week or two. It just takes time to mould, and I think it's very harsh. They'd be obviously happy to have picked up a win or two when the players were away. No. I think there's still a bit of time for them to be able to implement change. What you, I mean, what you would say actually when you when you look at Leicester's results, look, they, there's a 15 point difference when they were beaten by Saracens. But you actually look at Leicester and Northampton. They've only played five games each this season, but there there isn't much when you just look at score lines in their results. You know, a try here, a converted try there. No, and that's the, I mean, the really good thing about this 10-team premiership is that we are so competitive. I mean, aside from Newcastle that, that are at the bottom of the table, every other team can beat each other right now. And that is the fascinating thing about it. Um, it's a great thing that we've got the players involved all year, aside from England. England games now are weeks off, so we're going to have a really competitive league all through. And yeah, the close games, you could have gone either side of it and you'd be at the top of the league. But the problem with it being such a small league is you don't want to lose too many games because you, you find yourself at the foot of the league and you won't, you won't be able to get to the top. They could be top of the league, but they're not. We know who's top of the league, don't we, Chris Jones? Let's just go back to Stamford Bridge, another goal in the Women's Super League, Sheridan. It's Chelsea 4, Liverpool 1. It's a Lauren James hat-trick. Wonderful crossing. She was in the right place at the right time. And it looks like Chelsea are going to go six points clear at the top of the WSL. It's Chelsea 4, Liverpool 1. Northampton have turned it round, haven't they, Chris Jones, in, in the sense of they didn't get off to a great start this season, lost their opening two. Yeah, and won their last three, including a couple of really decent wins against Bath and Exeter. And what I've noticed when you look at the Northampton side, they've been one of the the teams to, to pick up a few players who suddenly became free agents because of the unfortunate demise of, of clubs like Worcester, Finn Smith coming in early to to steer the ship at, at Fly Harp with Dan Bigger moving on. What about Tom Pearson, one of the standout players in the league over the past couple of seasons moving from London Irish. Likewise, Chunyamunga, who's a really talented player in the, in the second row. Um, so lots of players that have been on the market, Northampton have done well to snap up. And just to highlight one guy who's on the bench, Henry Pollock, just 18. He's making his Prem debut if he gets on today and he's really tipped as one for the future. And just finally, Mark, one of the great things about having Chris Ashton with us is that he's played for practically every team in the league. <laughs> so he's a former Leicester and a former Northampton player and a former Sale player, <laughs> if, you want, if you want to revel in them being top of the league a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> how, how many, actually? As I'm just going down, It I'm wasn't to... that many, chappers. Six or seven, I don't know. <laughs> like I did it for just to be good at this kind of job. Make after. you very so media, yeah. So when you, 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 oh, let's get Ashley on that game because he's got that expert <laughs> insight on the club. Very clever, wasn't it? <laughs> can't be, can't be accused of favouring anybody, can you? Really, given uh, given the seven. Who do you want to win there? today? Um, I mean. You want rugby to be the winner, exactly. don't you? Chris? I mean, once I left Wigan Rugby League, that was it. My old derby was Wigan Saints. <laughs> and I entered into this atmosphere of Northampton Leicester, both sides. I just loved every minute of it, but my derby game is Wigan Saints. <laughs> yeah, they don't get much bigger than Wigan Saints, do they? Let's be honest. No, do they? I mean, but in rugby union terms, we're definitely at it here with Northampton Leicester. I'd definitely say it was the biggest derby uh, within rugby union, without doubt. I mean, just the final one, when you're looking at sides to get into the top four, would, would you say you could make a case for nine out of ten? Eight out of ten? How, many, how far would you would you go? Yeah, I think I mean, with Leicester's case, if they lose today, maybe they're out of that running. So I don't think... I'm hoping they're going to win. And if they do, then they're right back in it. That's You win a game or two and 
you back top four, top six, which is going to be so different from what we've seen in years gone by. We're going to see a really competitive team. And like uh, Chris Jones mentioned, with the other players from the other clubs going to, the, to bolster the other squads, it's only had a benefit for the whole league, really, because we're now just miles more competitive. So both games in the Premiership today are on Sports Extra. Uh, Leicester, Northampton, that's a five past three kickoff. Then Quinns against Saracens. But the second half of Leicester, Northampton will be here on Five Live at the conclusion of the football, which is currently Armenia 1, Wales 1. It's the opening weekend of the Premiership women's season as well. Rebranded, first game went the way of Bristol and they thrashed Sale by 48 points to 5. It's half-time in the Scottish Women's Premier League today between Hibs and Hearts, and that is goalless. Uh, in the one EFL trophy game today, Wickham beat AFC Wimbledon by a goal to nil. And in League Two earlier, Notts County 4, Bradford City 2 is how it finished. And at Stamford Bridge in the Women's Super League, still Chelsea 4, Liverpool 1. One minute to three o'clock, Stuart Clarkson has your news. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Hundreds of Palestinians, including medical staff, patients and displaced people, have been leaving the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City on foot. Israel's military has denied claims it gave people in the hospital an order to leave, but it says that it's agreed to assist the evacuation. Margaret Harris is from the World Health Organization. We've really struggled to get through due to the communications outage, but I do know that moving many of the people in Al-Shifa is highly problematic. They are so severely ill, so injured or such tiny babies, you can only move them with actual transport, not on foot. Jeremy Corbyn has described Hamas as a terrorist group after repeatedly avoiding the term previously. In an article for the Tribune magazine, the former Labour leader accused the Israeli army of being guilty of acts of terror too. Rescuers in northern India say they're stepping up their efforts to reach 41 labourers trapped in a partially collapsed road tunnel. Officials say they're exploring the option of drilling a hole from above to reach the men still stuck underground in the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand. 32 Wales fans have been arrested and then released without charge ahead of the match in Armenia. Officers from South Wales Police say they're working with the fan embassy and local police there to find out what happened. Supporters say they were given no reason for their arrest. Scientists manning the mission control at Elon Musk's SpaceX have lost contact with their new Starship rocket after it blasted off on a second test flight from Texas. The booster separated successfully from the rocket ship after liftoff but exploded almost immediately afterwards over the Gulf of Mexico. And plans to move many of the picturesque bookstalls along the River Seine in Paris before the Olympics next year have caused anger among the kiosk workers. The authorities say they're worried the tourist attraction could be a security risk with thousands of athletes due to parade along the route for the opening ceremony next July. BBC Five Live. The voice of the UK. Win the headlines. On Five Live Breakfast, we're giving you the chance to win the headlines. You can win your way into some of the biggest events of 2024. And on Monday morning, there's another chance for you to win tickets to Wimbledon. Wake up with Rick and Rachel and win your way in. Win the headlines. On Five Live Breakfast. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Back to the Euro 2024 qualifier shortly. Armenia won, Wales won at half time. Let's just return uh, to Cheltenham where John was watching Paul Nichols stage star in the Paddy Power Gold Cup and the horse won despite John. A big mistake at the final fence. Oh, it was a massive one, yeah. It was. It looked as though it was curtains, Mark. As stage star for 15 of the 16 fences sailed round here at Cheltenham, making the running together with the real Wacker, who eventually faded out of contention. Stage star foot perfect until that final fence, when he held a nice, decent lead over the eventual runner-up not long till May. He hit it hard, he landed steeply, looked like he was going to lose his front legs, then slithered to his back end. All the time, jockey Harry Cobden sitting tight and he galvanised Stage Star up the hill for a famous victory. Really late drama there for Stage Star. Paul Nichols underlining though what a good horse he thinks he is. He may well return.
return here for the Cheltenham Festival for the Ryanair chase. But deliciously, Mark, after today's tremendously performance, tremendous performance, uh, Nichols also hinted that through the winter he will try three miles. And if that's successful, then we might be talking about a Cheltenham Gold Cup on our hands. Of course, the Gold Cup in March, three and a quarter miles. A very dis different distance today, but stage star was terrific today. A first win in the race as well for jockey Harry Cobden. Uh, great stuff. Thank you very much, John. We might get some reaction a little bit later on here uh, on Five Live uh, at the golf. Earlier, Matt Wallace equaled the world record uh, for the most consecutive birdies in professional golf to go top of the leaderboard at the DP World Tour Championships. He ended the day 16 under, so he is a shot ahead of Tommy Fleetwood. Ferrari's Charles Leclerc is on pole for tomorrow's Las Vegas Grand Prix, and we'll have plenty more on that from 5.30 this afternoon here on Five Live. And Andy Murray has pulled out of next week's Davis Cup finals because of a minor shoulder injury. The teams are coming back out uh, for the Euro 2024 qualifier between Armenia and Wales. So let's rejoin James Collins and Conor McNamara. Thanks very much, Mark. Wales re-emerging back out onto the pitch after that boost. That own goal scored in stoppages ahead of half-time that has levelled this up at 1-1 and keeps alive Wales' hopes of qualifying automatically for Germany 2024 next summer. So, Tickney Jan's own goal, the first own goal that Wales have benefited from in over four years, James Collins. Wales were due one of those to go their way. Well, it's, it's, it seems like it's one of those games. It was going to be one of those things that, that maybe, you know, would boost Wales and, like, say, four years to get an own goal. and. You know, they, they weren't really creating anything. They had a couple of chances early on. David Brooks had a, had a, had a chance that, that, that he put over the bar. But other than that, they, they didn't have a lot. So to, to get that slice of luck in in such a big game will be a huge boost. And the time they got it going into half time where they haven't performed, you know, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a really exciting second half. If you weren't with us for the first half, Lucas Zalarian put Armenia in front after just five minutes. Well taken goal. And then Wales, a lot of huffing, a lot of puffing, not much final product. There was one good shot from Harry Wilson that was saved. And they really needed the boost of that equaliser. Now we'll find out if Wales can build upon it. Back underway, no changes in personnel over half-time. Armenia all in red, Wales in the change strip of white. And the Welsh playing from right to left in this second half, attacking the end where the Welsh fans are housed, away to the left. So a throw in for Artak Darshan, Armenia's number 20, tries to send it down the line. Header won by Ben Davis. Wales give up possession again inside the Armenian half. Darshan has done very well to elude Kiefer Moore there. Moore thought who Darshan was going to pass it away and Darshan just ran past him. Now it's been picked up by Bicha Chan. He attacks the edge of the D. Out comes a strong challenge from Ben Davis who wins the ball and wins a free kick. And despite Armenian appeals that they might get the... Uh, foul in their favour, it will be a free kick to Wales. You can tell already that, you know, early doors gone a first minute, but you, there's an intent, an intent from Wales already. You know, the, the ball's been played out there. You know, they're pressing hard. They, they, they're all rallying around, trying to win the ball back and trying to get the game going. So, Beachy Chad, who fell to the ground dramatically, tried to get a free kick there. He actually handled the ball on the ground. That was the reason for the, the free kick, which uh, Danny Ward will take from the edge of his... A penalty area, Armenia, who travelled to Croatia for their final group game on Tuesday. And um, you know, depending on results elsewhere, that will be one that Wales will be keeping an eye on on Tuesday night when they host Turkey, uh, as things stand. But a 1-1 draw for the moment. And just to go through the permutations, if this game was to end as a draw, and then if Croatia were to win later on, well, then Wales would need to beat Turkey on Tuesday and they would need Croatia to drop points against Armenia in that scenario. So uh, Wales very much against Armenia today, but they could be supporting Armenia come Tuesday. Well, let's hope it's just straightforward then, <laughs> Conor. Let's the, hope, e hope the, for a Wales win today. The easiest is. permutations are certainly involving a Welsh victory today. Already back from 1-0 down, can Wales take the lead for the first time in this game? We've only played two minutes in the second half. harry -Ann, Short pass into midfield, Spurzian gives it back to the goalkeeper. Nothing that Kincerovic could do about the own goal ahead of half-time. After that well-taken Connor Roberts throw in by the corner flag. Direct ball forward is too direct for Armenia. And it carries all the way through uh, to 
Danny Ward. Danny Ward, who's, who's not been involved for his club this season, but Leicester are on course for a return to the Premier League. They're in joint level with uh, Ipswich at the top of the championship table for now. As, uh, the ball is controlled by Harry Wilson. He's done well to lay it off to David Brooks, and then a good challenge by Kelizir will win possession back again for Armenia. The Armenians have it just outside their own penalty area. Iwu, Guchu Iwu, 23 years of age, number six on his back, rolls it to Kelizir on the edge of the penalty area. Haryan plays a little one two. Armenia trying to redevelop the rhythm and the tempo that caused Wales so many problems in the first half. This is Dashian on the right hand side. Gives it back to Iwu once again. Kalasir available and back to Haryan on the D of the penalty area that Armenia defend. 1 1. Five live from the BBC. The qualifiers for Euro 2024. And a well organised Welsh defence stepping up together as the through ball is played through. Joe Roden regains possession for the visitors. Yeah, the Wales are more than comfortable, you know. Armenia keeping the ball, they're keeping it well. Like I said, technically on the ball there, they're excellent, but they're not, they're not doing any Wales any harm there. They're keeping the ball at, you know, at the back four, and then when they do play ball, the play the ball forward quickly, Wales defenders are there to step in front and, and, and clean up, and then and then go on the attack. If it was to go sour for Wales in the second half, if they were to go behind again and lose, then a Croatia win later on against Latvia would uh, mean the end of Wales' hopes of progression through the group. They would go into the playoffs in the new year. Right, we've only played four minutes in the second half, but Wales are making the first change. David Brooks makes way, and it's Brennan Johnson who comes on. Johnson, such an exciting player with Nottingham Forest in the past, with uh, Wales, with his new team, Tottenham, and this might liven up the Welsh attack now with the game still at 1-1 Johnson on in place of Brooks let's get another update from the Chelsea women Liverpool women game here's Sheridan Robbins 10 minutes to go it's Chelsea 5 Liverpool 1 Shoka Newskin getting her fourth of the season she tapped home from close range it's Chelsea 5 Liverpool 1 thanks very much Sheridan last time we went to Sheridan there was a goal for Wales I was hoping history would repeat itself there but uh, we haven't missed any exciting action possession inside the army immediate half and it's rolled by Callis here back towards the goalkeeper so James Collins the introduction of Brennan Johnson yeah. discuss well yeah I think it's a, it's a it's a brave good move from from Rob Page I mentioned it in the first half comment you know Kiefer Moore as much as he can do it hold the ball up on his own he, he was very isolated for long periods of the first half so now Brennan Johnson's on obviously an exciting player full of pace hopefully he can get a little bit closer it looks like he might have gone straight up top to play alongside Kiefer Moore so Yes, good intent from Rob Page. He knows, you know, they got they got to win the game. Being in a player like Brennan Johnson on is only going to boost their chances. Defending to do for Wales here. Connor Roberts has given it away cheaply inside his own half. Now they've got to scramble to try and control Armenia into the penalty area. Tiknijan, the score of the own goal down the other end, tries to swing in a left-footed shot, but the flag was raised against him. And the Welsh defence held firm. And Tiknijan was cut offside. 1-1 one, one it remains. Yeah, well, that's, that's got to be a warning to Wales, you know. Like I said, mentioning that they look slightly better. Brennan Johnson on a bit more attacking. But Armenia are always going to be a threat. A threat, And they were and they were there, you know. that This is where the Wales defenders really need to, you know, stay concentrated. They, there's going to be long periods where they, you know, Wales are going to have possession and they're not going to have to, be, have to do too much defending. But when they do, you know, they've really got to, you know, concentrate and, and do their defending correct. Wales unbeaten in the last four games in a row they've come from 1-0 down to sit 1-1 in Yerevan for the moment 51 minutes of the big stadium clock a shrill blow of a whistle from the referee as the ball came forward I think Kiefer Moore's been pinged here for tussling for the ball before it arrived free kick to Armenia they're not clear I mean, two players go for but you see that all the time they've, they've each got a hold of each other's shirts the decision has gone against Moore it reminds me so much of when I used to play of Andy Cowell you know the, the, the bigger <laughs> player he, he, he used to get fouled more often than not but yeah. the foul always seemed to go against Andy and, and, and Kiefer yeah. Moore's having a, a similar problem here you know this afternoon Armenia won Wales won Zilarian, a player that will certainly need to keep an eye on. He's nudged off the ball there by Ethan Ampadu. Armenia want a free kick. The French referee says no and play on. Wales give up possession on the halfway line. Iwu gives a telegraph pass. It was intended for Bachichan and easily intercepted by Ben Davis. But Armenia hustling for it in the midfield. Down goes Grantley on Ranos. This time the free kick is for the home side. And there's cheers and there's whistles. And the home crowd want further action taken. But Free kick to Armenia with the game at 1-1. Tackles flying in everywhere at the moment. 
It looks like the perfect conditions, Connor. You know, the nice bit of zip on the pitch for a slow defender. I hope if I was playing a slow old <laughs> defender like myself. But it, Armenia's still showing the intent. You know, they're defending when they have to and, and still trying to trying to create. So, yeah, Wales, you know, as, as much as long as Robert Page has, has made this, deci uh, this decision to bring on Brennan Johnson, they're going to they're gonna try and attack more. But they have got to be so careful when, when they are attacking that they're not leaving the back door open for Armenia, possibly to get more chances. So just a, a delay and this play gets back underway. The free kick to Armenia will be inside the centre circle. Rolls back to Farazat Harayan. Drops his shoulder, goes around Kiefer Moore, runs into Ethan Ampadu and nearly gives the ball away near the halfway line. That was a bit reckless from Harayan who thought he could take the wall on. It's fallen for Dashian on the right-hand side, the number 20. Sends in a cross, which is too close to Chris Meppham, who heads away straight to Iwu. Iwu's played a delicate little ball to the left-hand side to Tiknishan. Now, he's got five red shirts inside the penalty area waiting for this. Zelarian gets it on the edge. Under pressure from Brennan Johnson, who's come on and is trying to do his defensive duty here. Johnson does well to win possession back for Wales. And now, with an Armenian down, Wales can counter-attack as the ball is played up to Kiefer Moore. There was a late challenge. Came in on Harry Wilson there. Wilson's been caught after the ball was released. Harry Ann is going to see yellow. Free kick to Wales on the halfway line. That was such a promising counter-attacking opportunity. And Harry Ann, well, I guess he decided to take one for the team there. Yeah, it's, a, it's an old school. The fact he, he doesn't look like a man I would want to mess with either, to be honest. He's, uh, he looks a bit of a handful. But yeah, Wales have broke. You know, he, he's done, you know, you see it often in football. He's taken the yellow card on the halfway line. Wales players obviously not not happy with it but you know he, he's, he's done a job for the team yes he's, uh, he's not to be tangled with is he Barazat Arayad he's got this big bushy beard that says just don't don't have an argument with me just uh, just carry on Wilson who was stretching and I mean there's no attempt to play the ball at all from Arayan there his only intent was to stop the counter attack and he's he's cleaned out Harry Wilson there with that challenge and, uh, you know, we don't we don't like to see it in football. You know, he, he knows exactly what he's doing, and like I say, he's taking his yellow card and and, and possibly stop Wales having an opportunity to score a goal. Uh, that doesn't. This could be a problem for for Wales down the line. That yellow card will rule Harry Ann out of the Armenia game against Croatia on Tuesday. There's a scenario where Wales would want Armenia to do well in that game, but they'll be without their captain as things stand. We get an opportunity uh, just to watch a, an incident earlier on where Iwu went down after playing a pass, but. There wasn't any opponent around him, maybe a, a little groin strain, something like that, as he played the, the pass forward, and he's had to get a little bit of treatment as well. So a few little stop starts. Ten minutes played in the second half in Yerevan. This is five live from the BBC. Armenia won, Wales won. Wales coming from behind, having conceded very early in the game, and then they equalised very late in the first half in stoppages at the end of those opening 45 minutes. Wales wearing all white. Their captain, Ben Davison, Possession. Regular captain Aaron Ramsey is in Yerevan. Not able to play though because of a knee injury. This is Nico Williams trying to twist and tease and find an angle to deliver a cross, but good work by Dashian to deny him any sort of space. Armenia give up possession though as they try to clear it away, and Ethan Ampadu has it back, supported by Jordan James. Those two youngsters operating in the engine room for Wales. Now, Brennan Johnson, for the first time in attack, gets the ball at his feet, makes a burst into the penalty area, takes on two defenders, and he runs it out of play. Goal kick to Armenia. First time we saw Brennan Johnson running with the ball at his feet. Yes, yeah, the first time we've seen him. You know, obviously we all know he's got great pace. He's, he, but Armenia have done well. You know, they've doubled up on him. They've got two defenders over to to, to try and stop him knocking it down the line. And um, that's what the Wales need to do. You know, they, they they've been in Armenia's half now for for three four minutes. You know, the, the ball's breaking. They're winning it back and, and keeping the pressure on 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 the Armenian goal. So, yeah, Brennan Johnson coming on as it seems as if it's, it's giving the whole Welsh team a lift. Uh, coming up later on today on Five Live, you'll get all the reaction from the qualifying session of the Las Vegas Grand Prix from 5.30. Uh, tomorrow from 8 in the morning on Sports Extra, it's commentary of the final in the ICC Cricket World Cup. And uh, further coverage on that from 12 o'clock here on Five Live. In Yerevan, Armenia 1, Wales 1. It's the second half of this qualifier. Shot from distance was always spinning over the top of Danny Ward's goal. It was uh, Spetsian who took it on. He's got four international goals in the past he scored actually in the most recent game for his country against North Macedonia last month but he wasn't threatening Ward's goal with that attempt they come again Armenia they're having a good spell here at the moment the game has got more physical a lot more fouls a lot more late tackles 
Armenia benefiting from that ragged nature. The ball has hit the referee here, and it'll come back for an uncontested drop ball. Yeah, they're not they're, they're not happy just to sit back and, and, and let Wales dominate the game. They, they, they're having a shot, hopeful shot there, you know, o over the bar. But yeah, I, you got you got to start trying to think. You know, as time goes on, is is Rob Page going to think about more changes? You know, he's, he's still playing the two sitting midfielders of Jordan James and Ethan Abadou. Is it going to come to a point where he might have to think about bringing one of the defensive midfielders off and putting another attacker player on? But um, yeah, that that time will tell. But I mean, they're definitely not out of this game. They're still they're not happy to sit back and and just doing their defensive work when they get the ball, they're creating chances. Our featured game in the Gallagher English Premiership this afternoon is Leicester Tigers against Northampton Saints. It uh, kicked off uh, just over 10 minutes ago. Chris Jones has got the latest. Hi there, Connor. It's Leicester 3, Northampton nil. It could have been a lot more. Leicester with a rolling ball try. Charlie Clare dots it down, but it was ruled out, perhaps a bit harshly for obstruction. But Leicester having much the better of these opening 11 minutes. Leicester 3, Northampton nil in the East Midlands derby. Thanks very much, Chris. From 5 o'clock at Sports Extra, you can listen the commentary of Harlequins against Saracens in the Premiership. Commentary of that Tigers-Saints game available right now on Sports Extra. 58 minutes played in Yerevan. Armenia won, Wales won. Rob Page has made his change, bringing on Brennan Johnson. Danny Ward has possession, dressed all in black, away to our right-hand side. It's given to Chris Meppham, into the centre to Joe Roden. Roden, who was the nearest Welshman to the ball when it went in to the net of uh, Tignijan for an own goal. So he's denied his first for his country. I think he was, very, still, very he, he, he was still trying to claim it, I think. I think he was a good <laughs> he, foot away from he it. Probably but I think will he, 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 too, he did yeah. run off trying to claim it, I think. <laughs> we won't blame him for that. Here comes Kiefer Moore. Good work for Brennan Johnson to release the Bournemouth striker, but down a blind alley. He runs the ball out of play. He's seen a lot in that right channel in this game, Kiefer Moore. And he struggled to keep the ball in play there. Out it goes for a throw in to Armenia. Yeah, and you can see him getting frustrated. You can understand why, you know, he's... I don't want to do him a disservice, but he's not that player. He'll do it and he'll do a job, but he, he doesn't want to be running the channels too. Well, he, he will do, but he doesn't want to be doing it as much as he has done. Mentioned it to Chappers at half time, you know, seeing Brennan Johnson come on. You'd like to see him, Harry Wilson, more down these channels, you know, doing a little bit of magic and trying to get the ball into the box where, where Keith Moore is, is most dangerous. Jordan Rhodes has scored a penalty for Blackpool. They lead Shrewsbury Town by a goal to nil in League One. Blackpool, who lost at Bolton last Saturday. As uh, Tiknishan comes in the attack for Armenia, that's a really dangerous delivery into the penalty area. Ranos jumped over it and there was no one behind. That's the biggest scare for Wales in some time. Nico Williams clearing the ball away. But uh, Armenia here have found a second wind and it spells trouble for Rob Page and for Wales. We've reached the hour mark. Armenia won, Wales won. Nice little one too. Zalarian returns the ball. Now it's on the D of the penalty area. Beach a jam with a shot. Ward can only parry and following up with Zalarian who should have scored. He's ballooned it over the top. That's a massive let off for Wales. The biggest Welsh scare of the second half. Zalarian should have scored. Wales should be behind. Wow, we mentioned it, Colin. They're not out of this game. I'd mentioned Wales are probably having, you know, more possession than they did first half. But you know, it's a, it's a great chance, a great shot. He's, he's at the bar, and like you say, Zalarian coming in. He's, he's, he's first to, to react. You know, the Wales oh. defenders are all sleeping, and it's come out to him. And you've got to say, he probably had time to have a touch. He's, he's tried, decided to take it first time on his left foot, and he's blazed it over the bar. But it's a huge chance for Armenia. Beach a chance shot, which beat Danny Ward, came rattling back off the crossbar. It sat up for Zilarian and as James Collins said had he just shown a little bit of the composure he did for the goal he scored in the first half Wales would be behind again that was a let off can Wales benefit now from it with uh, an Armenian on the ground and the Welsh have been urged to put the ball out of play Ben Davis has no time for any of that he turns points to the player waves his arm and plays on and then eventually the referee from France does stop play much to Welsh frustration, and I think that uh, they're now implying it's a, a head injury, and that's why the referee had to had to bring the game to a halt. But it'll end up being an uncontested drop ball inside the Welsh half. Armenia won, Wales won, and this is getting nervous and it is getting tension filled now on a day that Wales really do need to win this game. Well, that that you know that opportunity has really got a you know shape Wales into action because like I mentioned you know that they're, they're likely to score the quality they've got is is, is is playing for everyone to see and if Wales are a little bit too gun-ho going forward and are leaving spaces they're quality players the Armenian boys you know that they, they are going to create chances and if they get a, a few you know they'll score a goal so Wales as much as they, they've got to go and try and win the game and create chances they've got to be so careful 
you know, when they have got the ball, what, what the, the defenders for Wales are doing. You know, just an issue here with, with Beecher Chan. Um, we all know the rule about, you know, the referee must stop play if, if it's a head injury and, and player safety is so, so important. Beecher Chan goes down and I think he's been winded. He's holding his chest. He get, But then when the play doesn't stop, then he starts holding his head. It's not a head injury. And I think there's a little bit of the boy who cried wolf about this and we're seeing it a lot in games where people tactically holding their head because they know that's got to stop play I'm not sure what the solution to it is but it, it doesn't feel right no it's not right and, it, and it's just it's down to the player you know you wouldn't see you know I, I certainly wouldn't do that you know you need to see a bit more honesty I think from players but it, it goes back to the comment we spoke about first off they're going to do everything to, to slow this game down to you know a, a substitute here coming on you know they're taking their time doing that they're, they're chatting but and, and, and that comes down to you know, to, to, to being an international footballer, these these Wales boys are going to have to deal with this, not feel too much pressure that they're wasting time with it. They're, they're still playing, but it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Iwu's gone off. He's been replaced by Haruti Unian. Haruti Unian, who plays his club football in Armenia with the Punic club. He's 24 years of age. This is his eighth cap. Wales come in the attack, left foot across into the penalty areas, headed away by Harayan. And... Uh, chance now for Armenia to try and launch a counter-attack as Ranos spins around 360 degrees and tries to find a teammate but Ethan Ampadu has won it back for Wales and this could come down to which team finishes stronger Ampadu tried to release it to Brennan Johnson but he couldn't pick the pass that was a glorious opportunity had he made that pass Johnson was in one-on-one -on -one. big chance Ethan Ampadu he's just held on to the ball for too long Connor he, he probably should have he's taken the extra touch extra touch and Brennan Johnson's made a great run on his right hand side and he's just taken that touch and I mean defenders come back and done really well but that's that's again it's another little sign the quality hasn't quite been there today in, in the attacking third you know if he if he makes the right decision there Brennan Johnson's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper Ethan Ampadu who tried to draw the defender but he just drew him in too close and it needed a quicker release chances at both ends in recent minutes 25 minutes of normal time to go 1-1 between Armenia and Wales in this qualifier for Euro 2024 there's a neat back heel by Bacicchan into the penalty area Dashian though can't do anything with it can't pick out a teammate and his delivery is held on to by Danny Ward just mentioned in the early stages of that last Welsh attack this game could come down to who's got the stamina now going into the final quarter of the match who's going to be able to finish this game stronger because in truth over the course of the 65 minutes so far there's not been a whole lot between these teams no there hasn't at all and like you say it's going to come down to fitness you've got you know it might sound a bit of an excuse these Wales lads have had a long journey to get out to Armenia you know it's six and a half hour flight I think it is and, and maybe that's showing a little bit you know a little bit of tiredness in the legs or lack of sharpness but certainly as this game goes on you, you're going to you're going to see Rob Page make more substitutes. I've already mentioned the two sitting midfielders that, you know, as the game goes on, I'm not sure they need the two in there. So you might see another attacking forward, but you certainly, I think in these next, you know, 25, 30 minutes, you're going to see Wales making more substitutions and, 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 and trying, to, trying to take the game to, to Armenia. Yeah. Here comes Dan James. Dan James, who's uh, back uh, playing a game with Leeds United, having uh, been on loan at Fulham last season, former Manchester United player. It's his 48th cap for, for Dan James. And we all know the attributes that he's got. He's come on in place of Harry Wilson, who hasn't been the same since that challenge on him by Harry Yan to stop the counter-attack about seven or eight minutes ago. Armenia won, Wales won in Yerevan. Danny Ward with possession at his feet. But Dan James and Brennan Johnson fresh legs in the Welsh attack can Wales benefit from that Nico Williams has possession on the left hand side Dan James has started as an out and out left winger Brennan Johnson's playing on the right can they keep Kiefer Moore central and use his attributes through the middle this is Nico Williams seven or eight yards outside the Armenian penalty area gives it back in a deeper position to Ampadu nice ball by Jordan James Brennan Johnson's accuracy could be better there as he sought to bring Connor Roberts into play Armenia regained possession, Tikni Chan, the number 21, the left wing back, plays a nice ball up to the halfway line, but it's won back by Connor Robertson. Wales are beginning to win those 50-50 challenges. Just as I say that, though, Zalarian goes in and wins the ball away from Jordan James. The ball was played forward, and Danny Ward, sweeper-keeper, right out to the edge of his penalty area for Wales. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, you know, before the game, we were talking about, you know, Harry Wilson and, and what he now brings to this team. Now, now Gareth Bale's finished. This is the type of game that... 
for years and years Gareth Bale would have would have been in the team and produced a bit of magic and, and, and won us the game so it's down to one of these Welsh players Harry, Harry Wilson you know was talked about before the game about being the, the player who now takes over from Gareth Bale but you like to think the, the quality players you know your Brennan Johnsons Dan James come on your big players who, who've now still young men but got a lot of caps can do you know, a little bit of magic uh, or, or something something great, you know, a set-up player or an assist where, where Wales can go on and get a chance and, and, and try and win the game. Two active games at the moment in League One. Most of the games postponed because of uh, international call-ups. Blackpool, one goal uh, ahead against Shrewsbury Town, and it's still nil-nil between Stevenage and uh, Lincoln City. Stevenage, who are looking for a third league win in a row. Danny Ward rolls the ball out to Chris Meppham up into the midfield to Jordan James. James, who's only 19 years of age, remember, gives it back to Meppham, turns and gives it back to the goalkeeper once again. How much of the kitchen sink do Wales throw at this and how early as it bounces away from Brennan Johnson but nearly falls for Kiefer Moore and then uh, Routian tries to clear away. Scrappy at the moment in the midfield. Both teams giving up cheap possession and eventually the ball goes off out off Brennan Johnson and for a throw into Armenia. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you'll see Wales panicking. You know, there, there's no doubt as the game goes on, there is more space developing. Certainly in, in, in the final third for Wales, the attacking, the attacking third. So there won't be any panic stations yet. Like I said, there is boys in this Wales team who've, who've got the real quality, who, who can create, who can, you know, good pace, who can get down the sides and maybe it'd be a cross for, for Kiefer Moore or a bit of magic where they score themselves. But there certainly won't be any, any panic stations yet from Wales. Earlier on, very exciting second half of the Notts County Bradford City game. It finished Notts County 4, Bradford City 2. Here comes Dan James for the first time on the attack since coming off the bench for Wales. Turns on the edge of the penalty area. Tries to come in on his right boot. He's laid it back for the other James. Jordan James shot on target, parried by the goalkeeper. Nobody following up. And Kacerovic gets away with that. Jordan James looking for his first ever international goal. He's well outside the penalty area, but it's not a bad hit at all. Bouncing in front of the goalkeeper. That could have put Wales in front. Yes, yeah, a good effort from Jordan James. He's, he's, he's probably a bit far. I, I, I've got to give credit to Armenia there. Wales looked like they had numbers in attack, but they've defended the edge of the box really well. And it's, and it's Wales about to resort to a shot from 20, you know, 22 yards. And um, yeah, they're still defending the, the edge of their box where Wales are getting more and more numbers forward. So, you know, as the game goes on, are these Armenian defenders going to get tired? Lack of concentration where Wales can maybe, you know, get a chance or, or even score a goal. It is all over at Stamford Bridge in the Women's Super League. Chelsea against Liverpool and a very good day for Lauren James. Sheridan Robbins. Yes, a Lauren James hat trick. A fifth straight win for Emma Hayes. It's Chelsea 5, Liverpool 1. That leaves them six points clear at the top of the WSL. And Chelsea's unbeaten start to the season continues. Full time, Chelsea 5, Liverpool 1. Elsewhere in League 2, still scoreless between Accrington Stanley and Wrexham. A Barrow nil, Crawley Town nil. These games all midway through the first half. Forest Green Rovers hosting Grimsby Town. Gillingham have taken the lead at home to Salford City. It is Harrogate Town nil. Swindon Town 1 and Mansfield in front at home against Newport County Mansfield Town 1 Newport 0 Tranmere Rovers have taken the lead away at Sutton United in League 2 in those games that are taking place in the fourth tier 20 minutes to play in Yerevan Wales who've been 1-0 down away at Armenia back to 1-1 ahead of half time neither team has scored yet in the second half Rob Page who's made his attacking substitutions bringing on Brennan Johnson and Dan James but can they get the benefit Jordan James who's had a shot on target but Wales need more attempt to cross from Tiknijan on the left hand side is blocked by Connor Roberts and the ball goes out for an attacking throw into Armenia down the left hand side 20 minutes to go and Armenia about to make a double change here and having seen Wales make their alterations Armenia's coach Alexander Petrakov wants to get some fresh legs on himself. He's going to bring on Edgar Sarikian, who plays his club football in Russia. And one of the players departing, Vahan Bichachan, who was the Armenian who struck the shot off the crossbar in this second half that might have given Armenia the lead for the second time. Grant Leon Ranos, two goals in the 4 2 win over Wales in Cardiff. He's the other player who makes way. It is Arter Miranyan who comes on. Miranyan who plays for the Noah club in Armenia. So fresh legs on and Armenia need that. We mentioned that the physical nature of this game, which is becoming more and more important. Throw into Armenia down the left-hand side. 72 minutes on the stadium clock. Wales have got plenty back in defence here. Jordan James gets a touch but can only nudge it straight to an opponent. Miranyan picks it up. This is Zelarian. 
Attempts to turn to the penalty area, delivers in a low cross that was dangerous. Roden got it away, but not far, and then the following up shot is blazed over the top. That was an opportunity. Harut de Union couldn't keep it down. It's, it's great intent from, you know, the substitutes they made. The, the Armenia have made attacking substitutes and, you know, just coming on, and, you know, a, a good bit of play down the left-hand side. Poor defending from Jordan James, you've got to say, to let, the, to let his player get the, get the cross in the box and it's a wild shot. But they're showing great intent. The substitutions, they're attacking, they're attacking substitutions from Armenia and they're still trying. That's why I've mentioned before, when Wales are attacking, they've got to be so careful what they're leaving. You know, they, they, they don't commit too many forwards because Armenia's still got chances. Here come Wales again. Nico Williams into the penalty area, left-hand side shoots with his right foot but it was always rising away from that top corner Nico Williams who's got two international goals in the past scored a goal last season for Nottingham Forest of the Premier League yeah, this was a good opportunity for a right-footed player like Nico Williams cutting in off the left it was similar actually to Zalarian's goal right at the start of the game but he didn't quite have the control over the shot and it rose well over the top in the end 1-1 yeah. one, one it remains always rising it's, as soon as he hit you could tell it was going to go over the bar but again good intent from Wales Nico Williams the you know the, uh, the the left wing back is the, is the highest man forward he's cut inside and he'd probably be a little bit it's half a chance a little bit disappointed but it was it was always going over the bar five live from the BBC these you wait for qualifiers for Euro 2024 it'll all get underway mid-June uh, 20 teams will earn their place at the tournament 10 different groups uh, top two from each qualifies then another three get in through the playoffs and if, if Wales don't get the win here they might be looking at that route and the playoffs in March Germany of course qualified as the hosts so it's the host plus the three qua playoff qualifiers plus the 20 teams that that get in through the groups and that's how the uh, the full lineup is presented for the European Championships which will be the 17th edition of the Euros in, uh, in Germany next summer Wales hope to be there, still very much in with a chance, could really do with a goal here though. Ben Davis plays it up to the halfway line, challenge and key for Moore, he wins a free kick, free kick to Wales on the halfway line. And this is going to be an opportunity where it's getting to a time now, Connor, 75 minutes, the Wales decide to start going a little bit more direct, trying to hit, or, or are they still going to play? I, I think Wales have gone to a, a four at the back as well, Ben Davis looks like he's now maybe come out to left back with Connor Roberts playing right back and they're trying to get more numbers forward. Feels a long time since Wales last had a proper shot at goal though. There was that, that Jordan James effort, that's really been it in the second half. As uh, Nico Williams comes forward and now he's taken down and Armenia have got to be careful with their discipline here, they're giving away a lot of free kicks. They are, and like you say, they're doing it. They're probably doing it on purpose, you know. It's not a great challenge on Nico Williams there, but they, they, this is what they do, you know. They, they slow the play down. They know Wales are going to go all out to try and get the win and try and score goals. So they'll do anything just to, 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 to take this thing out of the game. Here's Dan James, number 20 on his back, rolls it back to Nico Williams, all the way back to the halfway line to Joe Roden. Williams available again. There's still a high energetic press from Armenia, who haven't shown any signs of real fatigue in the fresh legs that have come on as substitutes only helping in that regard Roden has it Nepom available on his right hand side this is the final third of the pitch where Wales are defending and Jordan James opts to sends it back to the goalkeeper Danny Ward Wales needed down the other end quarter of an hour to play clearance from the goalkeeper up to the halfway line it bounced off the chest of Kiefer Moore but he couldn't control it couldn't make it stick Armenia regained possession Tiknishan gives it back behind to Aruti Union that's a good ball over the halfway line to Edgar Servikian, one of the substitutes who's come on recently. Harian back to Aruti Union. This is better controlled stuff from Armenia now as they break into Welsh territory and a chance for Zalarian to attack the box. That's a good sliding challenge. Mepham needed to be careful there on the edge of his own penalty area, won the ball and a chance for Wales to try and get it back down the other end. Brennan Johnson back to Mepham once again. Wales know they've got to mind the ball, they can't be reckless with possession, but they need to get it forward. Bit of room now for Nico Williams on the left-hand side, comes forward with number three on his back. Hard running from Haruti Unian to get back goal side of him. This is Ben Davis, infield to Joe Roden, all Welsh territory, but not threatening at the moment, James Collins. Yeah, more than comfortable, and it's going to get a little bit more desperate for, for Wales, you know, they're going to have to try and, you know, when you start 
you know, getting it longer too early to Keith the Moore. That's you know, the, you can tell the defenders that's that's what they would like. They like a challenge. They like they like battling with with Keith the Moore. So, yeah, Wales have either you know, they, I, I still say it again. You know, they still sat there with the two sitting midfielders. This is a game Wales need to win. So, I think Rob Page probably needs to make a substitute and, and, and play one one sitting midfielder, one deep line midfielder, and, and try and get the ball in and with quality not just hopeful long balls into the box but you know hopeful ball balls into Keith Moore where he can hold up and try and get players around him uh, another goal in uh, league one for Blackpool Jake Beasley has made it Blackpool two Shrewsbury Town Neil Shrewsbury who were their first win in four games last Saturday but not going well for them today here comes Dan James on the attack for Wales gets to the edge of the penalty area tried to play a, a lateral ball out towards Connor Roberts and that's not worked at all chance for Zalarian to launch a counter attack down the other end for Armenia if you're just joining our coverage Armenia scored early to take the lead in this game Wales equalised just before the break 1-1 it is and a yellow card has just been shown here to a Welsh player it was for a foul on Edward Spurzian as Armenia tried to counter-attack and Jordan James the teenager goes into the referee's notebook yeah similar to what the Armenian defender did a, a few minutes ago you know they were on the break and Jordan James decided to take the yellow card to, to, to slow the breakdown but go back to that last chance for Wales you know Dan James has cut inside onto his right foot to me is screaming out to try and hang it up to the back stick for 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 Kiefer Moore to, to use his height and, and his aerial ability but he's tried to play a tricky ball across the box and it's got cut out and Armenia on the defence so it's just a lack of quality I think in the final third they really need to up their game pick pick better passes and, and, and certainly the quality needs to improve All right, there's been a, a change for Wales and Rob Page has brought on Nathan Broadhead Broadhead the Ipswich Town player and he's come on in place of Connor Roberts so they have taken off the right wing back to bring on a more attacking-minded player, and that, that absolutely, uh, you know, explains the, the intent of Wales here, who will not settle for a draw. This is a game they must win to keep those viable hopes of qualifying alive. Here comes Kiefer Moore on the brown three against two if he can pick out a teammate. Down goes Broadhead. I don't know if he just stumbled. There wasn't a defender near him. Moore was battling. Broadhead went down. Armenians felt that he was diving. Play continues anyway as Armenia attacked down the other end, and... It's been put out by Chris Meppham for a corner. End to end as the game really stretches with just over 10 minutes to play in Yerevan. Yeah, disappointed from Keith Morris again. He's, he's, he's found himself a bit isolated on his own and he's, and he's pretty much one-on-one -on -one with, with the Armenian defender. You've got to say he's got back and defended really well. It was just, again, lack of quality. Lack, didn't really have an idea what he was doing. Keith Moore struck, you know, the Wales were trying to get numbers up with him, but he was trying to keep on to the ball. And you've got to say Armenia defended it very well. well we mentioned the uh, imposing presence of Varadar. Ariane. He's not the tallest central defender you've ever seen. He's got the big bushy beard. Uh, if he was if he was in a movie, he'd be the leader of the biker gang. He's got that kind of tough look about him. Here's a chance. Tignishan in the penalty area sends it too high. After a clever short corner routine, a shooting opportunity for Tignishan, the player who scored an own goal in the first half. He would have loved to have made amends there. The angle was very tight, though. That would have needed to be a perfect shot from Tignishan, and it wasn't. It goes over the top, and it remains Armenia 1, Wales 1. An update from the Rugby Union Premier. Leicester Tigers against Northampton Saints. Here's Chris Jones. 27 minutes gone, Connor, and Leicester have a 9-3 lead. They've dusted themselves off after that disallowed try and a couple of Andre Pollard penalties put them six clear. One of them from the halfway line shades of the Rugby World Cup as the Springbok does it again. 12 minutes to go to the break. Leicester 9, Northampton 3. Commentary of that game right now on Sports Extra. Harlequins against Saracens to come later at 5 o'clock in Yerevan, though. This has now reached critical level for Wales. 1-1, a game they must win. There's all the build-up. Everyone knows the narrative. Win tonight, win on Tuesday, and they're going to the Euros automatically, Wales. Armenia ranked 95th in the world, but proving a very stubborn opponent here, and Wales need a big push now, James Collins. They do, but but with quality, Connor, you know, it's inevitable Wales are going to try and get the ball forward more than they have, but Armenia again are on the attack, and, and they Another Wales. shot deflected out for a corner. Spurzy and this time. Yeah, Wales are sending numbers forward. And, and, and these, these are quality players, the Armenian team. You know, they're all comfortable on the ball and they're going to get chances. Again, that was another chance. So Wales have got to be careful. They, they obviously need to get the ball forward. They need, to, they need to score a goal. They need to win the game. So, But they also got to be careful that they don't lose the game. So a corner to Armenia. These are tough times for Wales. They need the ball down the other end. They certainly don't want to concede. To the byline again. Tignishan drills it in. That was a brilliant delivery, but no one there to finish. 
And a defender, I think it was Joe Roden, did an almost little Croy flick to try and get it away from the edge of the six-shot box. It was Mepham, actually, as the ball came in low. Great delivery. I mean, anyone at all lurking at the back post for Armenia, they would have scored. And the coach, Alexander Petrikov, fell to his knees. He thought that was the moment his team took the lead again. Yeah, Chris Mepham's actually done really well. It's a great low fizz ball across the six-yard line. And as a defender myself, you know it's quite hard when the ball comes that quick to sort your feet out. He's done really well. He's actually croifed it out of play. But again, another... another Another good chance for Armenia, who are really pushing as well. Equalizer for Salford, Chillingham won, Salford won now in League Two, still nil-nil between Stevenage and Lincoln in League One. Blackpool still two goals to the good against Shrewsbury with half-time approaching there. There are seven and a half minutes of normal time to go in Yerevan. Remember, Wales scored in stoppages at the end of the first half. They will battle till the very end here. This game, where they really do want the victory for Rob Page's team if Wales draw this, then they need to hope that Croatia would drop points against Armenia and you're in that last game on Tuesday. Actually think about the game, Connor, obviously the Wales' goals and own goal, they haven't had really any clear-cut chances, you know, certainly this second half they've huffed and puffed a little bit and, and get possession, but no no real, you know, chances that you caught, you know, would, that, that they could score a goal, you know, the, the quality has not been there in the final third. Broadhead tries to bring it on the attack and he loses possession 10 yards outside the penalty area. He was looking up for options, he took his eye off the ball, I think there, he'll get another opportunity here. Nathan Broadhead, number 23 on his back, attacking the Armenian penalty area. Rolls it out to the right outside, Nico Williams playing on the right of defence at the moment. Sends in a cross, which Harry Ann is there to clear away. And then a wild and reckless attempt really from Ethan Ampadu, who's never scored a goal in international football and was in no danger of doing he so there. certainly not going to score from there, Connor. It's a waste, you know, it's come out to Ethan Ambadu, he can take a touch, it's a hopeful shot, 35 yards on the on the volley. Rob Page clearly disappointed, saying to relax, you're better off getting the ball wide, someone who's got a bit of quality can get the ball in. You know, hopefully Keith and Moore can get on the, on the end of a cross or the ball can drop, but it's getting to that time, Connor, where, where Wales are really going to have to think about, you know, getting the ball forward as much as they can. Yeah. If this does finish as a draw, it's not all over in terms of... Uh, getting the automatic qualification but it would be out of Wales hands Broadhead again gets possession on the edge of the penalty area but can't do anything with it and Arut Dionian is able to clear away doesn't find a way to get the ball out of play though and it for a moment was, was there for Wales to try and get it back into the penalty area blocks down eventually out of play throw into Wales on the right hand side very frantic nature to the game if this finishes as a draw and let's just say Croatia draw with Latvia later then Wales would be able to qualify automatically by beating Turkey on Tuesday. That, remember, would need Croatia to draw, though, with, Lat with Latvia. If Croatia win, well, then Wales would need to beat Turkey and they would hope that Croatia would drop points. Here's a chance. Shot from Wales. No power on it. Kacerovic made a bit of a drama of getting down to his right and parrying it away. I thought the goalkeeper could have held on to that attempt. But in the end, Armenia get it away anyway. Kiefer Moore's attempt saved by the goalkeeper. Yeah, he's had to generate all the power himself. He's right on the penalty spot, 12 yards out, and he's, he's, he's got it on target. Like you say, the, the goalkeeper has made a bit of a meal of it, but this late in the late in the game, you know, Wales need to win. You'd like to see someone else in the box, maybe, you know, putting a bit of pressure on the goalkeeper, getting on the rebound, but it was only Keith Moore in the box. Right, that's been Wales' first chance in a while. Into the last five minutes now. Armenia won, Wales won if you're just joining our coverage on 5 Live. Cross it to the boxes, just too high for Savikian. Good following up on the right-hand side by Dasham, but he's unable to pick out a teammate. Wales get it away for now, but then Dan James falls to the ground and spurts in and is able to pick it up for Armenia. Still plenty of energy from the Armenians. Dashan spurts in on the edge of the box, rolls it to the D. There's a clever back heel and then Zelarian blazes it over the top. He did so well with the finish for his first goal, but his finishing since then has not been that good for the Al Feta midfielder who plays his club football in Saudi Arabia. That was a good chance, but he didn't even trouble Danny Ward. Yeah, good chance and great play from Armenia. Again, I've mentioned it several occasions, the quality and, and, and the way they take the ball and receive the ball and, and find each other. It, it's, been, it's been really good to watch, but again, another, another chance for Armenia. Danny Ward pumps it long, Kiefer Moore jumps, push on the back, free kick to Wales, inside the centre circle, there are many Welsh fingernails being bitten amongst the travelling supporters, they reckon around 1,200 have made the journey to Yerevan to cheer on their team, hoping to pick up a, a big, big decider on Tuesday in Cardiff, where they could be securing the qualification. Remember, if Wales could get a, a late winner here, they could secure qualification today depending on how Croatia get on 
in their game against Latvia. But first and foremost, get the win here and then worry about what happens elsewhere. Just over three minutes of normal time to go. Rob Page looks a bit exasperated on the edge of his technical area. There's some message he's trying to get across. Free kick is going to be taken by Nico Williams. Hoofed into the penalty area. There's a rise. There's a header. It was Ampadu. It was straight at the goalkeeper. Chance for Wales. Point blank header from Ampadu. Either side of the goalkeeper. And Wales might have won the match. Yeah, he should score. I think Connor is he's so close to the goalkeeper. He's probably four or five yards out and he's headed it straight at the keeper. It's a long, hopeful ball into the box from Wales. Down headed the down. other end come Armenia. Ball lofted into the penalty area. Moranian controls it back to goal. Wales working really hard to get bodies back there. It's been an entertaining second half. We haven't had any goals since half time, but there's been that, that little intent in the air that something could happen at any moment. Spurzian onto Zalarian. A turn in the penalty area by Tiknijan. And again, he shoots and he shoots off target. And it's almost like he's trying too hard. He's the player who scored that own goal in the first half. And every time it's come to him in around the penalty area, he's had a pop from those tight angles. And every time it's been a way off target from Tiknijan. Yeah, going back to Ethan Ampadu's chance, he's, he's, just, he's a header five yards out, he's hit it straight at the keeper, he's come from a, a long hopeful ball into the box, but that's that's what Wales have got to do now, it's got to that time. Deep, deep time for Wales, Brennan Johnson takes on the defender, sends in a low cross and it's put out for a corner, Arup de Union sliding back to put the ball out of play, Broadhead was ready to pounce if that cross had come in from Brennan Johnson, and those two substitutes nearly combining in attack for Wales, corner to Wales, time running out, 1-1 in Yerevan, five live from the BBC, boos and cheers from the home crowd as Dan James prepares to take the corner kick, one last deep breath, here he comes, right footed, high, swinging, Roden jumps, comes off the top of his head and it's not a threatening attempt and it's a header that actually stays in play. Many of the Welsh players thought that had gone out. They had turned and were starting to run back into position. In any event, Armenia have scuffed the clearance and Wales will remain on the attack here. It's a throw-in on the left-hand side. Alexander Petrikov, the Armenian coach, is bellowing the instructions down there. He doesn't want this to slip away as we head to the final minute of the 90. Yeah, so disappointing, Dan James. Corner in the 88th minute, you know... This where you run your good big players, the real quality, and he's ballooned the ball to the back stick, and it's another chance gone. Still gone feels like there'll be one more opportunity. We've got the stoppages to come, just over 30 seconds of normal time to play. An opportunity to swing in across to the right hand side. Brendan Johnson tries to get his right foot on it, but it's blocked by a defender right in his face. Tignishan gives it away on the edge of the box. Armenia should have cleared. Now they will do with Spurzian. Wales have been brave. They've committed players forward, but now they're a little bit lax at the back. Zalarian comes forward. Options right and left. Zalarian into the penalty area. Moranian shot on target. Saved by Danny Ward. Oh, Wales could have lost it there. Ward pushes it out for a corner. It's a very exciting climax to the game as we move into stoppages in Yerevan and it's still 1-1 it's not exciting as a Welshman sat here watching it you know that's a great chance I'm here Danny Ward he hasn't had a lot to do all game he's been called up called upon in the 90th minute to keep Wales in the game credit to Armenia you know they're not just sitting back they're not here to make the numbers up they've had a right go here this afternoon and and and, and if it wasn't for Danny Ward there they, they, they would have you know, be 2-1 up. Five minutes have been added on for the stoppages. We've already played 25 seconds of that. Corner to Armenia. Far side of the pitch. Left-hand side as they come forward. Wales, who instinctively want to attack, but now at the moment have to return. The corner was nearly a shot on target. It whipped in at the near post. And Danny Ward, down on his knees, used both fists to punch it. He was unorthodox as he scrambled to get to his front post. And he's punched it back out for another corner. No defender anywhere near that front post area. That was nearly calamity for Wales. Yeah, he's almost caught Danny Ward out there. He's whipped it hard low into the front stick. I don't, don't think I've ever seen a goalkeeper punch it from that yeah. low to go over yeah. his own crossbar either. But um, yeah, again, Armenia still, you know, with the ball, as long as they've got the ball and, and like I said, their quality, they, they're going to create chances. Could have gone anywhere. Corner on the other side, the right for Armenia. We've played a minute, 15 seconds of the five. Spurzian delivers it in. Harian's header, but... It's a good, brave leap with defenders all around him, but he can't get his attempt on target. And that sails over the crossbar, and it's a goal kick to Wales, and they need to get it down the other end. Chelsea women have beaten Liverpool women 5-1 in the Women's Super League at Stamford Bridge. 
Later on this evening, France played Gibraltar in Group B, the Netherlands against the Republic of Ireland. There's a crazy scenario where it's actually in Ireland's interest to lose that game. If, if the Netherlands qualify automatically for the group, it increases the chances of Ireland getting a place into the playoffs, but they would still need much to go in their favour. Blackpool still 2-0 in front against Shrewsbury in League One as Armenia have given possession away. Poor clearance out by the goalkeeper Kajerovic. It is Stevenage nil, Lincoln City nil at half time in League One. It's also half time in League Two. No goals between Accrington and Wrexham. No goals between Barrow and Crawley. Forest Green are 2 0 in front against Grimsby. 1 1 between Gillingham and Salford. Swindon are 1 0 up away at Harrogate. And Mansfield at half time 1 0 in front against Newport still. Stockport still in front against Colchester. And Tranmere still 1 0 in front against Sutton United. All those games in League Two are now at the half time stage. We are midway through the five minutes of stoppages and it's do or die now for Wales James Collins is alongside me it is for sure <laughs> Armenia have got the ball or Wales you know they, they're trying they're trying to win the ball back and uh, and they just can't get it back and when they have done in these last 10 minutes you know it's just it's just been wasteful lack of quality again so yeah big big last two and a half minutes pretty much all the, the substitutions from Rob Page have been attacking ones Brennan Johnson Dan James Nathan Broadhead he has made changes looking for goals on a day when two chances that have come Wales way have been more defensively minded players Jordan James and Ethan Ampadu Ampadu one shot from miles out and one header from point blank range that was the big chance that Wales will ruin the second period Ben Davis is beaten by a bounce here Moranian to the byline on the right hand side for Armenia plays it in controlled by Zeliarian showing that poise again and then a fluffed shot by Savikian that was brilliant from Zelarian to set up Savikian he should have scored what a chance for Armenia massive chance he should score it's on his left foot he's 10 yards out again Zelarian he's been magnificent all afternoon lovely bit of skill he's so he's so composed on the ball a little dink a little dink over uh, Joe Rodon to, 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 to get it to, to this, his teammate and like I said he should score he should at least hit the target but Zelarian all afternoon has been tremendous Wales, who began the day second in Group D, who've benefited from an own goal in the first half, but they're being held 1-1 here as we enter the final minute of the five that were due to be added on for stoppages. This dream of securing automatic qualification this week is hanging by a thread now. Armenia still on the attack, headed by Aruta Yunian, has done well to give possession to the left-hand side. It is Aruta Yunian who's over there, he tries an attempt from miles out and that's not troubling Danny Ward. So Wales have got it back, but they've only got 30 seconds until we move into a six minute of stoppages and it's in the lap of the gods then. Maybe, maybe one more chance for Wales, but they are very much out of time here now. Spurts the end's effort there. He had all the power, but none of the accuracy. Yeah, you just got to think this ball's going to go as, as long as it can from Danny Ward and hopefully Keith Moore. Keith Moore, Moore helps it on to Brennan Johnson. He tries to burst into the penalty area. Aruta Union challenges him. Johnson goes down, looks at the referee, looks hopefully, but there's nothing doing with the French official. And Benoit Bastien says no penalty. And he says it's a goal kick. And that might be that now. Time is up on Wales in Yerevan. In fact, there is the final whistle. And players from both teams fall to the ground in terms of physical endeavour they've both thrown everything at that Lucas Zilarian's early goal after five minutes gave Armenia the lead Wales hung on in there through a, a troubling first half where very little went their way but equalised just before the break long throw from Connor Roberts headed into his own net for an own goal by Nair Tiknijan Wales were to bring on attacking substitutes in the second half but they couldn't convert what chances they did make into goals and 1-1 it finishes here James Collins yeah from a Welsh point of view very disappointing Connor they, you know the whole game lacked quality really no real clear cut chances and you know for such a big game where they've got a win I felt like Kiefer Moore was isolated a little bit too much Rob Page tried his hardest made, like you say make made the attack in substitutions but it was just one of those days you've got to give credit to Armenia to a man they were excellent defensively they were really good and and with the ball you know showed real quality so a very disappointing afternoon for for Wales they haven't lost the game but they could have because Armenia late on did have did have some chances so yeah as a, as a Welsh supporter as a well you know an ex-Welsh player it's very disappointing evening right so the scenario coming in to this game today was that if Wales won this they would be then just one more win against Turkey away from qualifying automatically this week the fact that Wales have now drawn 
it uh, it doesn't change it from Wales point of view they still must beat Turkey but the attention would turn to that Latvia game if there was any chance that Latvia could put in the performance of their life against Croatia it would do Wales an enormous favour but it's now out of Wales how own hands they need things to go their way elsewhere Armenia won Wales won in Yerevan it finishes yeah that's exactly it as Connor says everything in Croatia's hands now they're away to Latvia uh, later on and then their final game is at home to Armenia Wales final game is at home to Turkey and you'll hear that with us on 5 Live uh, on Tuesday evening I'll give you all the half times shortly and the live sport keeps coming here on 5 Live second half of Leicester against Northampton in the Gallagher Premiership to come that's just reached half time with Leicester leading by 9 points to 3 the final ball for Wales just wasn't good enough, was it? Was it, James? They, they didn't get the ball into Kiefer Moore, and and the op, the final choice, the final option, never felt like the right one. No, you, you're spot on, chap. Was, and that was exactly it. You know, it, it's just the final third, the final, the bit of quality. Rob Page did all the right things. He brought the attacking players on, and you know, you've got to say Armenia were excellent defensively around the edge of their box. They made it hard for Wales, but in these big games. You know, if you want to qualify for tournaments, you've got to find a way of finding that bit of quality to, to score a goal, to win a chance, anything to win a game. You know, I think Rob Page sat with the two defensive midfielders for slightly too long, if, if, if I'm honest, from my point of view, because you've got to go and win the game. And we mentioned it in commentary, just the final third, you know, the right decision making, you know, the, 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 the top, top players make the right decisions. And unfortunately for Wales this afternoon, they just clearly you haven't think, done that. You think they they could have been more adv more adventurous earlier? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, you've got to respect Armenia. You know the the way they play. They they showed real quality. But you know, it's a game you've got to win. You've got to you've got to do anything. I think playing the two 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 defensive midfielders, two holding midfielders, if you like, was maybe a little bit negative. Where you could have could have played someone a little bit further forward. But again, I don't want to take too much away from Armenia. I know I'm an ex Welsh player, and I'm gonna going to see what I saw from a Wales point of view but I thought Armenia to a, to a man all over the pitch were excellent and probably you know late on could have gone on and, and actually won the game well you kind of look at the stats actually they have more total attempts 19 attempts to, to 12 um, they have more possession as well 54 to 46 and in fact Connor as you, you can see and I can see the, the Armenian coach is leaving the field in tears no they are because well you see I mean, you know, of course we're looking at this through through sort of well eyes at the moment but Armenia had they won this yeah. game they still had the chance of finishing in the top two uh, themselves they still technically um, ha have a chance because uh, you know the, the, the draw keeps it alive for them very technically but but you know they, they pretty much they now know they won't be getting uh, a qualifying place through this group so that, I think I think that's why we've seen the, the little bit of emotion from them as they left the pitch. I mean, they they actually, apart from uh, Ampadu's header, they mm. probably created the best, well, not probably, they not definitely, definitely created definitely. the better chances. Yeah, they, they had that momentum of a home team. They were able to, to ride the emotion of the crowd. I think in, in Lucas Zellarian, they've got that little X factor. He's the number 10 who's got the South American tricks, the player born in in Argentina. And, and right until the very end, he was creating menace in the attack. But but no, I, I think you, you get that combination of a hard-working team who've got quality, and that's why Armenia have been good in this group. And look, it's fallen apart for them in the closing. They've now had, what, including friendlies, I think it's three defeats and a draw in the last four games mm. but but over the course of the, the, the calendar year 2023 they've put in some great performances including beating Wales in Cardiff so um, you can see they're going in the right direction and, and I think that's why we see a little bit of disappointment that uh, they see their, their run come to an end mm. here in this game I mean their problem as far as Armenia is concerned it was a 2-0 defeat uh, away to Latvia yes. la last month and you know with Latvia bottom of the group you sort of think well that was that was their missed opportunity y you sense don't you given Croatia's final couple of games James it's going to be very hard for Wales now to go to qualify automatically. Well, yeah, as you look at Croatia's two final games, you've got to you've got to expect them to to win both games and and get the six points. So it it's going to be difficult. Um, you know, Rob Page has got a, a big job on his hands to to lift these players. Um, it was a game, you know, with our quality, they would have they would have come come to Armenia to 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 certainly go and win the game and and, and dominate the game, and and they haven't done that. So. Yeah, very disappointing. Uh, it's going to be tough now, and you know, hindsight. Look at it. This win this game and, and look forward to a huge night in in Cardiff on Tuesday. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. So yeah, Rob Page got a big job in the dressing room uh, after the game. I mean, you talk about the two defensive midfielders staying on. Are, are you surprised? Because we talked at half time about this that the attacking threat wasn't changed, given how Armenia coped with Kiefer Moore. 
Yeah, it it just wasn't there, and you know you can say you can you can chuck more numbers forward. Maybe I, I'm I'm talking about the defensive midfielders, but sometimes when you do put more numbers forward, you know it gets a little bit more, a little bit, little bit more, you know, harder to to create chances. So. Rob Page did the right thing. He, he made the substitution. I think just later on, I would have liked to see, you know, maybe one of the attack, not, not make a substitution, maybe just push Ethan Ambadu forward a little bit more to try and get a goal. But more than the numbers, it was just the lack of quality today, Chappers, that, that let Wales down. They got into opportunities, like Ethan Ambadu, you know, taking too many chances, could have played in Brennan Johnson in the second half. So it, it, it wasn't the numbers forward. It was just the, the, the lack of quality, really, that, 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 that has done Wales here today. Uh, James, Connor, thank you very much. Armenia won, Wales won. So just to confirm that group then, Turkey, 16 points from seven games. Wales, 11 from seven. Croatia, 10 from six. Armenia, eight from seven. Latvia, three from seven. Croatia uh, go to Latvia later on today and then they finish uh, against Armenia. Um, Wales have Turkey. Let's go through all the half times because there's plenty of domestic football.